Welcome to Toyota Stadium for Georgetown College football here on Stretch. Tiger fight we are set for as Campbellsville comes to town to take on the Georgetown Tigers. Tigers 2-1 and one off the season, Georgetown that is, after a rather head-scratching loss to Lindsey Wilson a week ago by a score of 35-14. to 14. Score nowhere near indicative of how the game flow went in that one. Georgetown put up nearly 500 yards of offense in the game, but seemingly couldn't get out of its own way. Tigers turned the ball over twice inside the Lindsey Wilson red zone, go 0 for 6 on fourth down, and of course that punt botched snap that went over the head of Webb Bates. But Lindsey Wilson returned for a touchdown, really the difference in that one. So the Georgetown looks to bounce back against the Campbellsville team that the Tigers have owned throughout the history of this rivalry, which dates back to 1988 in that time. Georgetown leads the all-time series 24 to 6. And as of late, Tigers have won four straight, eight out of ten in the rivalry. You gotta go all the way back to 1997. For the last time, Campbellsville won a game here in Georgetown. Two and thirteen. Campbellsville is all time here in Georgetown, Kentucky. Campbellsville comes into today one and two on the year. They've alternated each of the first three weeks and opening. Week loss to Thomas Moore after Campbellsville jumped out to a two-touchdown lead early. Thomas Moore wound up exploding in the second half and beat Campbellsville 48-27. Week two, Campbellsville goes on the road again and wins a squeaker over Pikeville thanks to a botched extra point from the Bears. Campbellsville wins that game 14-13. And then last week, Campbellsville really taken behind the woodshed against a high-powered Bethel offense that has found its sea legs once again. Here in the Mid-South Conference this year, Bethel easily wins that one, 39-14. to These two teams last met back in October of 2019. Georgetown won that game in Campbellsville by a score of 23-14. to Campbellsville actually led that game at the half, 14-10, before the Georgetown defense took over. The Tigers had 10 sacks in that game, six and a half of which coming from Landon Carolla, who was easily the NAIA National Defensive Player of the Week. And Georgetown's second half defense, the fact, the story in that one, giving up just 48 yards in the second half and also forced four punts, forced a fumble, and also a turnover on downs is the big story there. See if either one of these two teams can get the running games going today. Running the ball has been the biggest issue for both squads coming in here today. In terms of yards per carry, these are two of the worst in the NAIA. Georgetown averaging 1.4 yards per carry on the ground. Campbellsville at 1.7 which would be extra interesting for Campbellsville given that they only have five offensive linemen available in this game. They have been ravaged by injuries through the first three weeks of the season, so they will only have five on the, uh, up front. In fact, Dawson Smothers had to move from the defensive line to the offensive line today just to fill in the gap. He will start at left tackle for Campbellsville in this one. They will also have a true freshman at quarterback, Chase Elmore, out of Central Hardin High School. 630 yards in the season, seven touchdowns, but does have six picks. And we'll also talk and say that the name of Tate Pringle a lot for Campbellsville. He is a do-it-all player for the Tigers. 264 yards receiving on the year, five receiving touchdowns. He will also punt the ball on the season. He's been a very good punter, averaging over 45 yards per kick on the season. So some challenges here for Georgetown today, but I think also a good opportunity for the Tigers to get back into the win column before a high-power Bethel offense comes to town next week. A lot of exciting things going on right now in and around Georgetown. Of course, the basketball team, men's basketball team, that is, starts the NAIA tournament tonight down in Montgomery, Alabama. You can follow Georgetown College Athletics on all the social media platforms as well as GeorgetownCollegeAthletics.com for all the updates uh, of that one. And also, just to let you know, hey, Tiger fans, do you have a favorite GC sports team or academic department? Are you a Tiger mate? On GC Giving Day, Tuesday, March 16th, you can double the impact of your gift by supporting the areas of Georgetown College that mean the most to you. Visit gogc.me slash givingday to learn more about our fun challenges and how you can take one moment on Tuesday, March 16th to make a difference in the lives of current and future Tigers. We thank you for your support, and here's a little bit more information about GC Giving Day. Hello to all my good friends who might be watching or listening. This is John or Doc Blackburn again. Three years ago, I made a giving challenge which was very successful thanks to you all and have done it each of the past two years as well. Today I'm making my fourth challenge and I wanted to say a little bit about why I do this. I'm in the process of doing my taxes for last year 
and that entails looking at my income and expenses for the year. It occurs to me that I am a microcosm of Georgetown College as far as finances go. It doesn't really matter how much I have at the moment. I must have a certain annual income to function each year. The college is like that, and the blood of the annual income that allows the college to function the way we want to function is the annual fund. Each year to pay my expenses, I rely on my income for the year. It's so with the college. The annual fund pays the bills and must be accrued every year for that purpose. This is why I'm again issuing my challenge. I will match your donations that come to the college by the annual day of giving, Tuesday, March 16th up to a total of $25,000 for the annual fund. That way, you and I can account for at least $50,000 of that fund and possibly much more, as has happened in the past three years. I'm proud and humbled by your response in fast and hope that you will again rise to the occasion. Thanks so much for your participation. Call and challenge your friends. Thank you. Point toss underway. Marcus Amasule for Georgetown and John Carruthers for Campbellsville. The captain's out at the coin toss. Georgetown has won the toss and will receive the football. Not often do you see that. The team winning the toss ends up receiving the football, but the Tigers will do so. More often it's become more customary anymore for teams who win the toss to go ahead and defer to the second half. But the Tigers want the ball first. The Georgetown Tigers, that is, and they'll look to get their offense going here in this one. Told you a little bit earlier about Georgetown struggles running the football, but they've made up for it in the passing game. The Tigers right now second in the country, averaging nearly 350 passing yards per game through three weeks coming in to this one. 348 of the Tigers, 395 yards per game through the air. So you do the math there. Tigers averaging just 47 yards per game on the ground and have allowed 13 sacks. So that'll be something, too. The Tigers will look to, t to get rectified here against a battered, Campbellsville roster kind of coming into this game. Campbellsville dressing just 44 players in this trip to Georgetown. They have just been that ravaged by injury. Had a chance to talk to Campbellsville SID Jordan Alvis, who's also calling the game for Campbellsville here today and was talking some about that. And he just basically said, you know, it's, they've, they've just not been able to catch very many breaks early on in the season. And the injuries have just, just continued to pile up. Campbellsville, one of those injuries – Today, their leading rusher, Cameron Morissette, who had a really fine game against Pikeville, 21 carries for 88 yards, but he is out for a second straight week. Campbellsville told you about their struggles running the football at 1.7 yards per carry. They also do not have a rushing touchdown thus far through three weeks in this 2021 spring football season. Speaking of spring, feels a lot more like it here in the Commonwealth this week. Sunny skies after a bunch of rain came through overnight and early this morning. And right now, no threat of rain, just some high, thin clouds, blue skies mainly. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s and will likely stay there throughout the day here today. It is a beautiful day here at Toyota Stadium. It's a good number of Georgetown fans here in attendance, of course, on a pre-approved list. All folks in here coming into today had to meet COVID protocols. Temperature checks, also masks, social distancing, all that stuff to allow this game to happen here today. Devin Neely is going to kick it off for Campbellsville, wearing the all-white uniforms with the maroon numbers and helmet. Georgetown wearing the black tops, the white pants with the traditional orange helmet. And they will have the Ti Georgetown Tigers, well, the Cobb boys back awaiting the return. Isaiah Cobb and Bryson Cobb, again, no relation, but still some fun to have the two of those back there in the backfield. And they're just about set here. This one, not much wind to speak of. Wind played an issue a bit at times last week in the loss to Lindsey Wilson, especially on some punts. Both Georgetown and Lindsey Wilson had some troubles handling and fielding some punts in that one. But as of now, not much wind to speak of. Good number of fans here in attendance, of course, limited. And per conference policy, uh, no visiting fans allowed. It'll, it'll be the same next week when we have the ball game here on stretch as Georgetown will host Bethel 
to conclude the home slate of the season for Georgetown before the Tigers go over their final two on the road in April against Thomas Moore and Pikeville. Neely set the toe up from the 35-yard line, and the Tiger rivalry renewed here in Georgetown. Line drive kick, and Bryson Cobb will field it inside his five right up towards about the 25-yard line before he is gang-tackled by a host of Campbellsville Tigers. And now we'll get an early look at the Georgetown offense. We believe it'll be Hunter Krause getting the start today at quarterback. We will likely see Zach Dampier in as well. They have split time on the season thus far, and it will be Krause getting the start. 60% completion percentage of the season, 761 yards, three touchdowns, and two picks. Isaiah Cobb starting in the backfield. Nick Conley out for a second straight week. Also, Brandon Leff will not be in uniform here today. He was banged up at the end of the Lindsey Wilson game. Krause wants to throw. Screen up first down. Darius Barber has it, slipping through tackles, and he's out to the 28-yard line. That's Barber's 22nd catch on the season by far and away the leader for Georgetown. Now over or at about 280 yards on the season. He and Aaron Maggard both had big receiving days last week. Barber had eight catches. Maggard had ten. A gain of four on first down to the 29-yard line. As Barber and Maggard go to motion on the, to the near side. This is Kraus. Swings it out wide to Cobb, and he drops it. Pretty easy ball to catch there, and Isaiah Cobb let it go right through his hands, and it'll be third down for Georgetown. The Tigers much better on third down a week ago against Lindsey Wilson than the first two weeks. Georgetown 8 of 17 against the Blue Raiders a week ago, and that spells good news here today because Campbellsville gives up 46% of its third down defensive attempts. So the Tigers need the Campbellsville 35-yard line. Krause, no movement there in the middle, doesn't need to, and he's comfortable in there, finds Aaron Maggard. Maggard's 15th catch of the season. Georgetown needs six, they get seven. And a good start here on third down for Georgetown. One against a Campbellsville front that's had to do some reshuffling. Dawson Smothers, a traditional defensive tackle for Campbellsville, has had to move to the offensive side. It's still a 4-3 front for Campbellsville. Micah Corley, Bryce Mumphrey, Grover Russell, Anthony Sams Jr. on the front line. Carruthers, Bennett, and Whitaker, the linebacking core. Corners of Kobe Reese, Malcolm Walker, and Kane Newland, and Chance Lucas, your safeties here today for Campbellsville. Swing pass out to the near side. This is Barber. Stiff arms one man out across the 40-yard line. Slips through one across the 45 and bumped out of bounds at the 47-yard line. He stiff arm Julius Jackson, the freshman DB for Campbellsville down. And a good start here for Georgetown. Just get the ball into the hands of your playmakers. And that is what Georgetown is doing here early. The Tigers out to the, their own 47-yard line. Jared Kim and Nick Howard, Sam Dingle, Josh Finley, Max Hill, your starting offensive line for Georgetown. We'll likely see also Cade Mullins come in at times at tight end. Kraus, plenty of time, pulls it in and gets thrown down. Good closing right there by Micah Corley, the grad transfer a native of Campbellsville coming back home, has his first sack of the season. In fact, that's just the second sack of the season in, in, the, in its entirety for the Campbellsville defense. As you said, sacks have been an issue for the Georgetown front early in the season. That's the 14th sack the Georgetown O-line has allowed in now three-plus games. It breaks it a loss of four back to the 43-yard line. Under center, Isaiah Cobb gets the handoff, and not much doing. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And there you see the woes of the running game continue for Georgetown. Just no surge in the middle of that offensive line at all. And now the Tigers in a third and very long situation as Xavier Abernathy comes into the game for the first time at running back. Noah Kramer to the left side, near side of your monitor. Jake Johnson all with the top. Abernathy ships in the backfield. Third and 14 for Georgetown. Krause rolling out the entire way. Once Johnson on the deep out route. Johnson, tough catch. He was able to pull it in at the Campbellsville 41-yard line. Great route by Johnson. Great ball from Hunter Krause. Threw that ball perfectly and in a great spot for Johnson to grab it. Jake Johnson with his 12th catch of the season to put him over 200 yards. And most importantly, another third down conversion for Georgetown as they needed 14 and got 17. 
So if you go back to the start of the Lindsey Wilson game, Georgetown's now 10 of its last 19 on third down. Cade Mullins into the game, also T.J. Wettstein. Two tight ends in for Georgetown for the first time. Kraus going down again in the backfield, and it's Micah Corley again. Corley feeling fired up here. Transferred in from Kentucky State University, went to Campbellsville High School. Feeling rather comfortable here at Toyota Stadium. He has two sacks on the opening drive. In another situation there where you saw Kraus not really much time to move and really not much of a drop back there for Kraus either. Four minutes into the game, Georgetown has the ball second and 13 from the Campbellsville 44-yard line. Will Thomas in at slot receiver to the top side. Kraus, design quarterback draw the entire way, trying to push his way across the 40-yard line. He will. He'll be brought down at the 39-yard line. Much more manageable third down situation here for Georgetown now. Gain of six on the play. It'll make it third down and eight. Tigers two for two here on third down thus far on the drive. Jake Johnson will be out to the right. Noah Kramer to the left. Isaiah Cobb in the backfield. And now we've got a flag here as I think Kraus drew a defender into the neutral zone here. We'll wait for the call from our officiating crew there. The hard count drew camp two Campbellsville players into the zone. I'm wondering if they were able to get back. Another lengthy discussion here. What seemingly should be a routine call, but we'll see. We'll see if the Campbellsville player got back. It's the only thing I can think of here, the reason why we have this such of a delay is that the officials debating whether the Campbellsville players got back and then there was a false start on Georgetown? And they will get together and I think correctly make the right call there. It's an offside against Campbellsville, so it turns a third and eight now into a third and three from the Campbellsville 34-yard line. And that'll spring T.J. Wettstein back into the game, wearing 88 in black. He is a junior out of Paris, Kentucky. He'll be on the right side of the line, really in the slot for Hunter Kraus. Kraus will go from the gun. Isaiah Cobb on the handoff, nowhere to go once again. This Campbellsville defense came into today allowing 189 yards on the ground per game on the season. And thus far in this one, Georgetown, again, has not been able to get the run game going. It is a loss on the play of three. It'll make it fourth down and six, and pretty easy decision here for Georgetown to keep the offense on the field at this point. You're obviously too far for a field goal, maybe too close for a punt, but fourth downs have been an issue for Georgetown. They're one for ten on the season, 0 for six a week ago against Lindsey Wilson. Georgetown needs a Campbellsville 31. Kraus with time and ran out of time, and Micah Corley got him again, and Georgetown once again will turn the ball over on downs as Micah Corley has been making easy work of the right side of the Georgetown offensive line as he got in there on Kraus again. And Georgetown, after all that work on that drive, taking five minutes and 45 seconds off the clock, turns the ball over at the 45-yard line. Kind of a disappointing finish to a drive that showed promise early on. Campbellsville now with the ball for the first time. Chase Elmore wants a shot down the left sideline. Pulled down out there. Is that inbounds? Yes, it is. A terrific catch on the far side by true freshman Patrick Odin to go over the top of Zion Bethel and pull it in. Odin, a freshman out of Plant City, Florida, grabs his 13th ball of the season. Well done on the play for a gain of 16, and Campbellsville will go to the line in a hurry. They average 18 points per game through the front three. And now we've got a flag on the play before this one starts. False start called against Noah Blankenship, who was the starting right guard this week. Wholesale changes to the Campbellsville front. Dawson Smothers moves from the defensive line to offensive line. He's at, he's at left tackle. Jaden Hamilton at left guard. Ethan Gossage in at center. Carlos Reyes moves from right guard to right tackle 
to fill in for Cadalis Siner, who was out today. And as you said, Noah Blankenship moves from the backup guard spot into the number one position at right guard, and he is called for a false start. Elmore with all kinds of pressure, going to try and get out of it. White going to try and hustle him, chase him down, as is Standifer, and he'll get out of bounds. Chase Elmore chased outside. Kyron Simpson will chase him out there. Elmore today wearing number 10 for Campbellsville. He's been number six all year long. So interesting that that change happened here today for Campbellsville. No, no reason given for that number change. But in either case, Elmore, the true freshman, is chased out of bounds there and picks up a couple on the play. Here is Elmore. Pressure coming again. Elmore throw it away and out of bounds. Looking for Pringle on the near side. Would have been a tough catch. But Elmore chased away. A mash unit for Campbellsville up front for a line that gave up nine sacks a week ago in the loss to Bethel. Georgetown's been getting in on Elmore early and often here in this series. Really, the only time Elmore wasn't pressured was when he got rid of it in a hurry on the first throw of the ball game. So now it's third and 12 for Campbellsville. They have not been good on third down this season, just 21%. Elmore. Stepping up, nowhere to go, and he's going down to the backfield. May have been able to get back to the line of scrimmage at best. Marcus Amasule in there on the stop. He's been the leader in sacks the last couple of weeks and picks up another one there. And Amasule, well done, and Campbellsville will send on its punting unit. Now keep an eye on this. Tate Pringle, Campbellsville's most dynamic weapon, offensively is also their punter. He has punted the ball 14 times coming into today with a long of 48. He will kick this one away and is sailing way over the top of the head of Darius Barber and bounces into the end zone, or at least I thought it did. And they will say it as Side Joe says, yes, it is a touchback. So the Georgetown defense holds after a turnover on downs on the first possession, and the Tigers will come back this time. Hunter Krause will be back out at quarterback for Georgetown. We didn't see Zach Dampier last week against Lindsey Wilson until midway through the second quarter. And Dampier actually played pretty well against Lindsey Wilson a week ago. His one bugaboo, the fumble inside the 15-yard line when Georgetown was trying to cut into a three-score deficit in the fourth quarter. Krause back out for his second series. Hand off out to the wide side to Darius Barber. Just his fourth carry of the season. Just trying to get something going offensively. Campbellsville bench hollering at something across the way. Not sure if they maybe saw a late hit on the play. But as it stands, it's a three-yard carry for Barber, who had a touchdown on the ground a week ago against Lindsey Wilson from one yard out. It was his only carry of the game. So now Barber on the season, four carries for ten. 6.35 to go in the first quarter as Aaron Maggard comes in motion. Georgetown with the ball for the second time. And before they get going here, we have another flag. Max Hill, the right tackle, called for a false start. He has had a rough start to this one. Micah Corley has abused him through the first series, so maybe just trying to get out a little bit ahead of Corley on the right side of that line. We'll keep an eye on that towards the top of the line there. Corley is 99 in white. He had two and a half sacks on the first drive of the game for Georgetown, including the one on fourth down that caused the turnover on downs. So now the penalty moves Georgetown back to its own 18-yard line. Maggard and Barber in motion to the near side. That leaves Jake Johnson one-on-one -on -one at the top. Low snap, and now Krause just has to eat it. Sam Dingle fired a fastball right at Hunter Krause's ankles, and nothing else Krause could do with it but fall on it. And Georgetown continues to go the wrong way. It's a loss of five here and backs up down to the 13-yard line and making it third down and 17. Kind of a similar start and a similar story to the Lindsey Wilson game, just self-imposed mistakes from Georgetown, pinning themselves back offensively. Here is Kraus on third and a mile, wants it down the seam, over the top of Barber, and incomplete. Well covered on the play by Kane Newland. 
And Georgetown goes three and out. Keep an eye on how the execution of this punt goes. Ryan Burke, the long snapper, fired one over the head of Webb Bates a week ago that Lindsey Wilson picked up and ran in for a touchdown, not too far out from where they are right now. Patrick Odin will be back awaiting the return. He'll stand at his own 45-yard line. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit in the face of Bates. No problem with the snap here. A high ball. The wind's going to grab this and kill it inside the 40-yard line. It'll take a Georgetown bounce. The Campbellsville player comes up and plays it there, Odin does, and a dangerous play that is from the freshman Odin, Patrick Odin. Still trying to decide who has the ball here. Georgetown's got it. They're still discussing this. And Campbellsville trying to argue that they had secured it on the ground, and then Georgetown took it away. No, it is Georgetown ball. So Patrick Odin makes a freshman mistake and comes up and play a ball he should have never gotten near. And Campbellsville turns it over here on special teams, and the offense for Georgetown right back on the field and will start from its own 42-yard line. So an ugly start for both teams here in the first quarter. Georgetown out now for its third series. 5.23 to go in the first quarter. And neither team really getting going on offense as of this one thus far. Kraus going down again. Trying to roll out to the right side. It broke down on the weak side. And freshman Luke Reynolds comes in to get his first collegiate sack. He is out of Taylorsville. They had to design roll out to the right. Nobody covered the backside. And the linebacker Reynolds comes in for the sack. It's already the fourth sack of the day given up by this Georgetown offensive line. Krause near side has that one to Darius Barber. Barber is going to get this the sack yardage back and then some. He'll be out to the 45-yard line. Kane Newland brings him down there. But an important gain for Georgetown on the play. Moves the ball out to the 45-yard line. A much more manageable situation here to make it third and seven. We're just down two for four thus far on third downs in the game. Will Thomas split out to the top side. Tamir Jones on the near side. He had a 37-yard touchdown catch a week ago against Lindsey Wilson. Now Barber and Maggard shift back. Third and seven. Kraus evading Corley, fires it out to the far side and out on the far side. Look, like Will Thomas just had his arms raked there by Malcolm Walker. Nothing called on the play, so that makes it fourth and seven. As again, we saw on the play, Micah Corley just run right around Max Hill at right tackle. And I think Georgetown may have to start making an adjustment, putting somebody else out there to at least chip Corley as he has just been whipping Hill on virtually every snap on the pass rush. So Georgetown gets a gift off of a muff punt, but the Tigers can do nothing with it. They go three and out again. Webb Bates on. Patrick Oden back and waiting inside his own 20. Another high spiraling kick. Kane does a smart thing this time to not only wait for the fair catch, but let it go. And a good job of angling that punt by Webb Bates as that ball is going to go out of bounds at the Campbellsville seven-yard line. That is excellent work for the junior punter for Georgetown, Webb Bates. Pins Campbellsville way back inside its own zone. Campbellsville now out on offense here. 3.39 to go in the first quarter in what has been an ugly first quarter if you're a fan of offense, no matter which side you are rooting for as you're watching us here live on stretch. Chase Elmore back in. He'll have Josh Hinton to his right as his tail back, and Hinton will get the carry, and really nothing doing there at all. I don't even think he got back to the line of scrimmage as Chad Holleran continues to make plays in what has been a – Terrific freshman season for 
Chad Holleran out of Frankfort, Kentucky. Came into the day, one of the leading defenders on the, on the team with 22 tackles. He's already been involved in a host of plays here today. Elmore this time will go five wide. Campbellsville likes to work quickly. And now we've got a flag on the play. Two Tigers for Georgetown jumped into the zone. And the head linesman is going to say they got back and induced a Campbellsville false start. It'll be a false start against Tate Pringle, who was out wide. So that backs Campbellsville up. It'll be back to about the three-and-a-half-yard line. It just continues to be ugly. So now Elmore will keep five wide, but he'll be standing two yards deep in his own end zone. He'll need a good snap here from Ethan Gossage. He'll get one, fired out to the far side to no one in particular. I think he was trying to get it to Odin on the receiver screen, and I don't know if it just slipped out of his hand or what, but that came out of his hand like a flailing duck. And it becomes third down and 13 for Campbellsville at its own three-and-a-half yard line. This might be a time here for defensive coordinator Shan Housekeeper to dial up some pressure on the true freshman quarterback and see what he can do with it. Four wide this time for Elmore as he again stands in his own end zone. George Sam will rush four. Down the middle, wide open, well-thrown ball, and it'll be a first down for Campbellsville out to its 24 Yard line, Zion Kenner, the junior out of Bowling Green, pulls in his 10th catch of the season. It'll move the chains. Pickup of 21 on the play on a well-thrown ball from Elmore down the middle. Standifer in on the stop, but still good accuracy from the true freshman. 2.30 to go in the first quarter. We are still scoreless here at Toyota Stadium. Elmore gives his check to his O-line. He'll have five wide once again. Pringle on the near side, stacked up behind Kenner. Elmore throws to the left side. Another ball that didn't get out clean, and it will be completed out wide for a minimal gain. Howard Smith pulls that one in, his fourth catch of the season. Smith is another guy who spent time on both sides of the ball. Last couple of weeks, though, he's been really primarily on the offensive side and really has been all over the place. He's lined up. In the slot, is lined up as an H-back. He's been a receiver split out wide, kind of a jack of all trades. And when you're down on numbers due to injury, you have to have guys be willing and able to step in to various positions. And Smith has done that the last couple of weeks for Campbellsville. He picks up two here on first down. 90 seconds to go in the quarter. Low snap. Elmore going to hand it off to Hinton. And that is stuffed up in the backfield. Never had a chance. Low snap from Gossage. Took that play apart from the get-go, and Marcus Amasule in again on the stop. The Urbana University transfer into Georgetown. Again in on the play, also D.J. White. It'll be a loss of nearly five on the play, making it third and about 13 once again for Campbellsville with one minute to go in the quarter. Chad Holleran again also in on the play. Georgetown, the way Holleran has looked, Georgetown's found a stud an inside linebacker and Chad Hollerin. He is just a freshman. Here he comes in pressure. Not going to matter as Elmore is going down on a play he never had a chance as Georgetown brings the heat this time. And Peyton Standifer comes in for his second sack of the season and Campbellsville will punt. Thought they would bring pressure on third and 13 when Campbellsville was in its own end zone and, they, and Georgetown doesn't. This time Shane Housekeeper says we're not going to sit back and let the freshman get time. Bring some heat. He went right up the gut in that reformed Campbellsville offensive line, and Elmore never had a chance. Pringle stands in his own end zone. No problem with the snap, and he'll kick this one away. A high knuckleball, and Georgetown will get away from this as that's going to go out of bounds at the Georgetown 43-yard line. So just an 18-yard punt officially for Pringle, and Georgetown by far and away its best position of the game here in the waning seconds of the first quarter. Hunter Krause back out once again for this series. He has been under duress all game long. If you ever get time here, Campbellsville does not have a deep safety over the top of Jake Johnson. Instead, they're going to hand it to Isaiah Cobb. 
Cobb out across the 40-yard line and just shy of the 35. Nice run there on first down for Georgetown. It'll be out to the 37-yard line, and that will bring an end to the first quarter here at Toyota Stadium. Neither team's offense is really able to get going. Defense dominating thus far. We are at the end of one here at Toyota Stadium, scoreless on stretch. Here's how this will work. You'll watch this commercial, then look up Georgetown College. No, not that one, a Christian college in Kentucky. You'll be impressed with the school and your scholarship. You'll watch GC win yet another national championship with lifelong friends. You'll attend Oxford University. You'll take a class with that professor who blows your mind. You'll find your major and your career. You'll get internships and graduate, and your Georgetown degree will get you that first job or into grad school. You'll remember this as the moment that shaped your life. You're welcome. Think different. Think GC. Apply now at georgetowncollege.edu. Georgetown offense back out and looking to keep its quarterback upright. Hunter Krauss was sacked officially five times in the first quarter. That's now 18 sacks allowed by the Georgetown offensive line in 13 quarters of play on the season. Really negates your ability to throw the football down the field when your quarterback doesn't have time. And, of course, as we've seen in three years, Krauss has a big arm. He'll throw it fastball to the near side. Looking for Jake Johnson, and that is well defended by Malcolm Walker out wide. Walker, really good size for a cornerback, 6'2", 185. He is a senior out of Cynthiana, Kentucky, and played that one to perfection. No chance there. Walker, Harrison County High School graduate. Third down and four for Georgetown. Tigers two for five on third down in the first quarter. But this is when Campbellsville's brought pressure. They're doing it again. Krause does get time. He throws the ball out wide. Barber cut in, and it'll be fourth down, and I would be shocked if Bill Cronin put the punting unit out here. Another situation similar to the first drive in the first quarter. Too far for a field goal, really too close for a punt. And it was in this situation Hunter Kraus was sacked. Watch out for Micah Corley on the near side of the line for Campbellsville, 99 and white. He's standing up this time, working against Max Hill. Corley going to get some pressure inside. Barber has it, and that is going to be close, and that's going to depend on the spot. Barber caught it beyond the first down line and then went back to try and get some extra space. And I think the officiating crew is going to give him forward progress. That is a dangerous play from Darius Barber. He had the first down, and it looked like he actually gave it up to try and gain extra going toward the left sideline. But it is a first down conversion for Georgetown, just their second fourth down conversion of the season on 12 tries. Hand off up the middle to Isaiah Cobb, just trying to plow through, and he'll get just across the 30-yard line before he is slung down. Micah Corley, another, another play for him. He is a good-looking player for Campbellsville. Of course, coming in as a grad transfer. He has had a really strong start to this ballgame. Krause will go under center once again. He'll have Isaiah Cobb behind him just inside the 30-yard line. Cobb will get the handoff once again. Nothing fancy to this, and Isaiah Cobb busts through and gets across the 25 to the 24-yard line. Really one of the better running plays of the season for Georgetown. It winds up being a gain of five. It'll make a third and one. Both teams right now, when you factor in quarterback sacks, still in the negative in terms of rushing yards. Krause throwing the ball in the day so far, 6 of 11 for 59. Georgetown changing it up here a little bit. I think starting to realize, starting to take advantage of what's played out in the numbers wise. Campbellsville struggles against defending the run. Third and one. And up, up the middle, and not sure that Georgetown's going to get that one as Bryson Cobb took this one forward and is short there. And if Cobb start, hits that line with a full head of speed, he might have enough momentum to carry him forward. Instead, he got the feet tap dancing and really gave up any momentum he had. So. 
No gain on the play. It'll be fourth and one, and Georgetown will keep the offense on the field. Cade Mullins checks in up front, and Georgetown will go with an unbalanced line. It will be strong side right as Jared Kinneman moves from the left side to the right side on fourth and one. Darius Barber not going to get it, never had a chance. Andrew Bennett, the senior linebacker, comes in and makes the play beyond the line of scrimmage, and Georgetown again turns the ball over on downs on fourth down. Micah Corley a little shaken up after the play, actually popped his helmet off during the play. But once again, Georgetown cannot convert on fourth down. Two out of 13 on the season now, and the second time here today, Georgetown has given it up on downs. Even running toward the strong side of the line, the extra size over there was still no match for the Campbellsville defense. Elmore with a play fake. He has time initially. It's breaking down, though. Slip through one. Trying to slip through a second, and you're not going to break the grip of Peyton Standifer. He gets you in his mitts. Consider yourself going down. Elmore in the backfield at that time. We'll see where this one's marked here. I think they may say he got back to the line of scrimmage here, so it won't go down as a sack. It would have been the third Georgetown sack of the game. Defenses continue to be the story in this one. Looking on the sideline right now for Georgetown, Zach Dampier warming up. Hunter Krauss with his helmet off, so maybe we'll see Zach Dampier on the next series for Georgetown offensively. Elmore pressured again, throws it up for grabs, and a good job by Elmore to get it out of bounds as he was knocked down behind the play by Sander Roxvag and Elmore a little slow to get up. They ran that play fake inside. Trying to fake it to the tailback that time, Taylor Hutt, and nobody on the D-line for Georgetown bought it. And Elmore, once again, he really had no chance on the play. as ever three Tigers waiting for him. Standifer heads out. Keegan Rogers comes in now on this play at the top of the defensive line. Third and ten for Campbellsville. They're one for three. Elmore down the seam. Another not th well thrown ball, but well done to pull it in again by Zion Kenner in the slot. It'll be a first down. And another throw for Elmore that has come out ugly out of the hand. Fluttered in the air, and Kenner actually had to adjust behind him to pull it down. Another strong catch there for Kenner, the junior out of Bowling Green High School. He transferred into Campbellsville from Austin P. Hunt on the near side. He is popped behind the 40-yard line. Zion Bethel coming in showing, hey, I can hit like a linebacker. Pushes Hutt back for a loss of a couple on the play. That was just the fifth carry on the season for Hutt and nowhere to go. We mark it officially now a loss of three, so back to the 39, making it second and 13. 10.50 to go in the first half. Elmore near side, better ball out of his hands, and it'll be pulled in by Patrick Oden. He gets to the 44-yard line. That'll make it third and eight. We have yet to see Tate Pringle really get involved in the offense at all. He's only been targeted once here in the first half. Well, the only time he's touched the ball is when he's fielded to punt it away to Georgetown. You have to figure at some point, if Campbell's is going to get going offensively, they got to start finding number one in white. He will be at the top of the screen here on this third down play and matched up against Zade Jones-Wilson of Georgetown. Pressure coming. Want the screen on the near side. Here is Odin and Bethel the first there. Odin breaks through, but the help from D.J. White helps to clean it out. Bryce Bowen in there as well. It'll be a pickup of a couple to the Campbellsville 49-yard line, making it fourth and three, and Campbellsville will send on the punting unit here, and this may be a situation where you could see a fake. If, if I'm Georgetown, I'm playing this as a safe return the entire way with Pringle back there and such a short yardage to gain, just three yards. It would not shock me here to see a fake from Campbellsville. Pringle is as electric as any player in the Mid-South Conference and his the ball in his hands. He will punt it away, though. Good end over on kick. Jake Johnson returning it for Georgetown this time inside the 15-yard line. Big hole on the near side. Johnson out across the 30, and he's tripped up from behind. 
at about the 32-yard line. So Georgetown trying to change things up, trying to get Jake Johnson involved here. Johnson has been quiet today, just one catch for 16. But get the ball in his hands there, get a little mojo going his direction. And he has a nice return, and it will be Zach Dampier in at quarterback on this series for Georgetown. Dampier on the season, 283 yards, a touchdown and a pick, completing 62% of his passes. Quick pass out wide. Barber has a good block out wide from Tamir Jones, but a better job to make the tackle out there. That was Kobe Reese able to disengage enough from Jones out wide to trip up Barber by the feet. And just a minimal gain here, a call to gain of about four. Second and seven here for Georgetown at the 35. Dan Pierre, the lob down the sideline. Jones, again, as he was trying to go down the sideline, looked like it was Malcolm Walker grabbed once again. But a little too far out wide and nothing called. It winds up now being third and seven. Outside of the fumble last week against Lindsey Wilson, I thought, Dampier handled himself well, 16 to 21, 179. He'll have third and seven here. Georgetown two for seven on third down. They've missed on their last five. Dampier on the wheel route. Barber wide open, has a first down and more into Campbellsville territory. And he is tripped up by Kobe Reese at the Campbellsville 41-yard line. Good play call there, good design from offensive coordinator Michael Caba. Get Barber in motion to get him a clean release off the line. Coverage late to move over. And a pretty easy pitch and catch on the wheel from Dampier to Barber. That's already Darius Barber's sixth catch of the first half. Puts the ball at the Campbellsville 41-yard line. 8.05 to go in the second quarter. Still looking for our first points of the ball game. And off up the middle. Trying to lower the pile and move it forward. Good hard running from Georgetown on the play. That was Zach Babb making that play as he lowers his head and moves it forward for seven, the longest Georgetown run of the day. Carruthers in on the stop. That was Babb's first carry of the season. And two hands over the ball, just lower to shoulder, not messing around with any kind of fancy stuff. Wetstein goes in motion. Dampier wants Thomas down the near sideline. Thomas pulled that in with one hand, but couldn't get a foot down in bounds. Kobe Reese in coverage. And Thomas, an acrobatic play, but could not get a foot down in bounds. Tough break there on a well-thrown ball by Dampier and Reese in good coverage. But Reese did the right play there. Even though Thomas made the catch, Reese just slowly riding him towards that sideline and denied Thomas the chance to get that foot down. So as it stands, it's now third down and three. Isaiah Cobb behind Dampier in the pistol. Now shifts right. The option play, Dampier near side. Cobb drops another one. That one much tougher to grab, but it, it really an awkward play from the get-go. Does that look like it was a true RPO? As Dampier looked like he faked the toss, was going to run it, nothing was there to run, so he tried to pull it back at the last second, and nothing doing there. So Georgetown will have another fourth down situation. Fourth down and three. The Tigers one for three today on fourth down and just two for 13 on the season. Jake Johnson will be up on the near side against Kobe Reese. See if Georgetown looks his way. Johnson's been quiet offensively. Dampier instead looks left, out wide. Darius Barber has a Georgetown first down, breaks the tackle inside the 20, and out of bounds is approaching the 15-yard line. Barber has been a busy man here today. That one goes for 19 yards. Barber in the first half, seven catches for 79 yards, and Georgetown – Able to keep the drive going, and the Tigers break into the Campbellsville red zone for the first time. 
See if Georgetown can finish the drive off here and put points on the board. Remember, two red zone turnovers last week against Lindsey Wilson are absolute killers. Georgetown going to go with a more heavy set front. More of a throwback to the past offensive looks there from Bill Cronin. Zach Babb, the carry here, nothing doing. Corley in on the stop once again for Campbellsville. Also in there on the play, Anthony Sams Jr., the other defensive end for Campbellsville. Bennett in also on the play. Andrew Bennett, that is. Andrew Bennett and John Carruthers, the two linebackers for Campbellsville, really in on just about everything on every play. Second and ten, Georgetown again goes with a heavy set front, and Dampier wants to th throw out of it. Nothing doing here. Good coverage down the field, and Dampier fires it away. Johnson grabbed it, but I don't think he got a foot in bounds. He did not inside the ten-yard line, so it'll be third and ten again. Play took a little long to develop. And with the way the Georgetown offensive line has been struggling here today to pass protect, not sure that's one you want to go with very often in this ball game. You want to send that one out and probably get that out of the hands of Dampier a little quicker. But you also give credit to the Campbellsville coverage down the field. Dampier really had nowhere to go off the initial play fake. And so Dampier now 3 of 8 for 46. He faces third and 10 from the Campbellsville 15 yard line and Georgetown similar look one more time. Seen this look in all three plays here in this sequence. Dampier wants the end zone. Johnson's got a step, but the ball just overthrown. He had Kobe Reese beat, but Dampier put just a little too much mustard on it and Georgetown will now send on the field goal unit. It'll be the lefty Chris Klein on. Three of three on the season, his long of 38. This one here. We'll call a 32-yard field goal try right down the middle. Slight wind at his back. He should have more than enough here to get this one to the uprights. Wetstein will hold. Klein up through there and up and good. Good job by Wetstein to get that hold down. Lace is kind of cocked sideways. Doesn't really matter, though. Chris Klein now four for four on the season. And we finally have points here at Toyota Stadium. 5.43 to go in the first quarter. Chris Klein, good from 32 yards out. And Georgetown takes a 3-0 lead over Campbellsville on stretch. Chris Klein, good from 32 yards out. Gives Georgetown the lead with 5.43 to go in the first half. Georgetown three, Campbellsville nothing. Here the Georgetown coaching staff talking to its offense on the field. I think the offense, a little disappointed they couldn't come away with more on the drive, but the coaching staff telling them, you know, good job there, able to move the chains, convert on a fourth down play, and we're able to put points on the board. Klein's kick, not a good one. Going to be fielded just inside the 15-yard line by Patrick Odin. Odin trying to slip out wide, and that won't happen as he is met by four orange helmets. They'll mark his progress stopped at the 28-yard line. So Campbellsville now out for its next series. Campbellsville just 52 yards of offense here in the first half. Chase Elmore throwing the ball 6 of 9 for 65, so you do the math there. Campbellsville minus 13 yards rushing. Georgetown's not much better, minus 5. And again, told at the top of the broadcast, these are two of the worst rushing teams in the country coming in, not only in yards per game, but yards per carry. Neither team averaging more than two yards per carry on the ground this season, and that is held true in this one. Both teams' defensive lines have been very good. They'll hand out the middle here, and Hinton was dead on arrival in the inside of that offensive line. Sander Roxvag in there to lead the charge for Georgetown on a play that never had a chance. 
And I think Hinton's a little shaken up on the play as he was punched down to the turf. Looks like he's okay, though. Maybe just he had the wind knocked out of him. And the injury is the last thing Campbellsville can afford as they have just been racked with injuries the last couple of weeks. Only 44 players in uniform today for Campbellsville, so injuries they cannot afford. They've had to do some shuffling on the offensive line. Carlos Reyes started the game at right guard. Now he's out at left tackle. Loss of one on the play. Elmore getting pressured. Amasule hunting. Elmore will throw it into the Georgetown bench and just nowhere to go. Rafael Roan also in on the pressure for Georgetown. And Holleran and Roxvag came to finish off Elmore. And another situation similar to what Georgetown has seen, just no time for the quarterback to throw the football, even when going from the gun. These two quarterbacks, and three really, if you count Krause and Dampier, have not had time to throw the ball at all today. Third down and 11 for Campbellsville. See you now two of five on third down in the game. Georgetown's already had 10 opportunities on third down here in the first half, converted on three. Late sub in, Amasule in for Georgetown, and Tigers having issues getting those subs in. And won't matter anyway as Campbellsville will take a timeout. Keep track of all Tiger Athletic schedules, recaps, stats, and more by visiting GeorgetownCollegeAthletics.com. Make sure you follow us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also subscribe on YouTube. That way you can keep track of all things, any and all schedule changes, any and all results. Of course, we always want wins here at Georgetown College. You'll also be able to keep track through there on how the Georgetown men's basketball team is doing as they begin the NAIA tournament tonight, taking on Kaiser University. If the Tigers win that one, they would advance to tomorrow's second round to take on Stillman College with the winner of that one going on to Kansas City. Out of the Campbellsville timeout, it'll be third and 11 for the Campbellsville Tigers needing their own 38-yard line to keep the drive alive. Four minutes, 51 seconds to go in the second quarter in what has been a defensive slugfest in this one. Elmore rolling out, no time again. Gets it away, jump ball. Pringle's going to get it, his first catch of the day, but he'll be three yards short of the first down. It'll be fourth and three for Campbellsville. Nice job by Elmore just to get that one away and throwing against his body as he was rolling out to the left once again, but it is not enough for a first down. And for the second straight drive, Tate Pringle is going to punt on a fourth and three situation. Clock rolls, 4.20 to go. Jake Johnson will stand just inside his own 25-yard line. Johnson had a solid return on his last attempt. See what Campbellsville elects to do here. Pringle going to run it. Thought this might be coming. He'll have a first down and a lot more. He'll be inside Georgetown territory and cut down at the Georgetown 45-yard line. You had to know that was coming at some point. Campbellsville trying to do something to get themselves a spark offensively. Why not let your best playmaker take that and just run it? And there was wide open spaces on the right side. So Campbellsville does indeed pull the fake punt out. A bit of a dangerous spot to do it inside their own territory like that, but still, Georgetown was playing their return the entire way. We'll see if this gives a shot in the arm to the Campbellsville offense, which has struggled on the day. Just 59 total yards of offense for Campbellsville before that run. That run of 20 from Pringle, the longest play of the day. Now Elmore down the right sideline, and a miscommunication between he and Pringle as Pringle stopped about 15 yards out, and Elmore threw it long, and now we have a, a player down for Campbellsville, and that is the last thing that the Tigers can afford here in this one as they are almost totally depleted along the offensive line. Can't quite tell who that is. It's down on the play for Campbellsville. 
But if it is an offensive line, then that is not a good sign as CU was only dressing five linemen here today. So you'll have to have somebody on the defensive line move over to offense, at least, if not at least for one play, maybe more. 3.27 to go in the second quarter with a Campbellsville player down. Looks like they're checking on lower extremity of the player. And while they tend to the injured player here, we'll step aside here on stretch. Campbellsville into Georgetown territory, trying to do something with it. 3.27 to go in the first half, trailing 3 0. Let's talk numbers. One, that's our ranking in Kentucky for the difference we make in our students' future earnings. Three, that's the number of years in a row we've been ranked as best in Kentucky for students getting their first job or into graduate school. 100, that's the percentage of fully qualified students from our pre-med program who get accepted into medical school. 30, that's the number of seconds it just took to change your life. Think different. Think GC. Apply for free at georgetowncollege.edu. That is Dawson Smothers injured on the play, not able to put any pressure on his right leg. He was the young man we told you about. He had to move from defensive line to offensive line just to fill the injury void in this game for Campbellsville, and now he goes out. We'll try and see who comes in and takes his place. He started the game at left tackle, has been moved around to a couple different positions as the game has gone on. Still trying to identify the young man who's in there. It looks like he's going to be in a right tackle. See if I can get you a name here for this play. Throw off the mark from Elmore as he was looking in the slot to Zion Kenner. Looks like it's number 69 for Campbellsville, who we unfortunately do not have a number on and was not listed as part of the travel roster here in this one. So another injury to the Campbellsville offensive line. And now a new man in at right tackle. And this is an offensive line that has already struggled on the season and has struggled coming into today and has struggled today. Elmore on third and ten, hammered in the backfield and going down again. Sander Roxbag once again with the sack. And now after the sack, Georgetown's going to take a timeout to stop the clock with three minutes and 13 seconds left to try to give their offense all the time needed to try and move down the field and get some more points before the half. Remember, Georgetown won the toss and received the opening kick, so Campbellsville is going to get the ball to start the second half. Colin Smith also in on the sack for Georgetown on the play. It'll be fourth down and about 17 yards here. Darius Barber will be back to await this return. He has been Georgetown's most electric playmaker on the season. He has been a busy man thus far here today. Nine touches here in the first half, 82 yards in total. Pringle back to punt this one away, and you want to keep an eye out here, but I'd be absolutely shocked if Campbellsville tried the fake punt again here on fourth and 17. Not much of a win to speak of here, so Pringle should have an opportunity to get a good one off here if Georgetown doesn't apply pressure. Not much pressure here. Pringle does get it away. End over end kick, and Barber will field it at his own 15-yard line. Going to bounce out wide. Space is there if Barber can get there. Barber uh, across the 35, steps out across the 40-yard line. Exactly what Georgetown needed on the return, and now a flag comes in late. Barber stepped out at the Georgetown 41-yard line. It's a return of 26 on the play if it stands. Flag came in very, very late. And it comes in late because there was an illegal block in the back on the play against Georgetown. Didn't see who that was on. The number was not identified by the officiating crew, but in either case, it's going to back the Tigers up. An ill-timed penalty there on special teams. Georgetown had a couple of those last week against Lindsey Wilson that really hurt them. But the penalty here, we'll see where they mark this off. Looks like they're going to mark it from the 36, so it'll go back to the 26-yard line. So... 26-yard return from Barber winds up being a net of, a, of 11 after the penalty mark off. Three minutes remaining in the half. Zach Dampier will be the signal caller again on this drive. 
Three of eight for 46, Dampier is, as he has Maggard going in motion to the top side. Dampier wants a screen set up, knocked in the air, and is that intercepted? Yes, it is. Micah Corley read it all the way, popped the ball up in the air, and Andrew Bennett comes down with the interception. That play was telegraphed from the get-go, an easy read for Corley, and what a catch and a diving grab in there from Bennett. And now Campbellsville forces a turnover, and they are in business at the Georgetown 20-yard line with 2.55 to go in the half. Campbellsville now can take all the time it wants here on this drive. They have two timeouts remaining. Do not have to be in a hurry in what is easily their best field position of the day. And a drive here if you're Campbellsville, you've got to come away with points. Elmore out wide, wants it all to Pringle. Good ball out there. Hand fighting back and forth, and Pringle pulls it down for the touchdown. He and Kyron Simpson jostling back and forth for position. The officials let it go. Both players were doing it. And Tate Pringle pulls down his sixth touchdown of the season. I like the play call there from Campbellsville. Don't mess around with anything else. Just go for the throat right away. Let your best playmaker make a play. And Pringle pulls it in, and Campbellsville has the lead. It can turn that quickly. It is Elmore's eighth touchdown of the season, the sixth to Tate Pringle. Devin Neely on for the extra point, and nowhere close. Low and wide, so it remains 6-3 in favor of Campbellsville with 2.48 to go in the first half. Second missed PAT of the year for Neely. But give Campbellsville credit, taking advantage of the Georgetown turnover immediately. Elmore now up to 93 yards with that touchdown and took a while for Tate Pringle to get himself going, but we saw the fake punt run for 20 yards and now has his second catch of the day. And that one being a 20-yard score to put Campbellsville on top. Another first half here where Georgetown has hurt itself. The Tigers have had more than their fair share of chances to put points on the board and just cannot do it. Georgetown 3 of 10 on third down in the game, 2 of 4 on fourth down. The Tigers averaging just 2.7 yards per play in this game. Another game where his defense is playing well. Campbellsville just 93 yards offense here in the first half. They now, after that 20-yard touchdown, averaging 3.8 yards per play because they've run 12 fewer plays than Georgetown in the game. Isaiah and Bryson Cobb now will await the kick of Devin Neely as Campbellsville has its first lead today. Returnable kick for Bryson Cobb. He'll start at his four-yard line. Isaiah Cobb leading the way, and Bryson Cobb tripped up as he went just across the 25-yard line. Excellent work on special teams there for Campbellsville. That was Howard Smith making the play. As it looked like Bryson Cobb had some space on that right side, and Smith just got his right arm in there, and it tripped Cobb up. Zach Dampier after throwing the pick on the first play of the previous drive is back out here for this one. Looks like it's his half to finish here for Georgetown. Thirty-seventh play of the half for Georgetown is a swing out wide to Barber, and he is going down in the backfield here. A loss of four on the play. I think that was Newland out wide. Kane Newland, the nickelback, making the play in the backfield. So Georgetown continues to go backwards. Julius Jackson also in the area for CU. I'll call it officially a loss of three, so second and 13 at the Georgetown 25. Clock rolls with 2.10 remaining here in the first half. Barber comes in motion near side. Dampier looking left, though. Now into the middle. There is Barber. Barber has the catch. I think he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down marker, but good job by Dampier to draw the safety to the far side and open up the seam 
for Barber. That is Darius Barber's eighth catch of the game. He's now over 90 yards. 100 seconds to go in the half as Barber picked up 11, making it third and two. Tigers three of 10 on third down. They've missed seven of their last eight. Handoff up the middle. And looks like it'll be enough for a first down. Couldn't quite tell initially who the runner was for Georgetown on the play. That was Bryson Cobb in on the run. And he does indeed have enough for the first down. 124 to go and the clock rolls. Georgetown has two timeouts remaining. Dampier again under center. Play fake. Johnson down the field, has a step on Reese, and pulls it down inside the 20-yard line. A monster gain for Jake Johnson. That was one-on-one -on -one the entire way. Trust your senior to beat the senior Kobe Reese. And Jake Johnson, a gain of 45 on the play, by far the biggest play of the day. And before the play, Georgetown, I think, is going to spend a timeout. Now Campbellsville will actually call a timeout here. Check that it'll be a gain of 40 on the play for Johnson there. So, again, biggest play of the day, but spot at the 15-yard line. Campbellsville is going to take a timeout here, try and get its defense organized. 104 to go in the half. So Campbellsville with one timeout, Georgetown with two, and the ball at the 15-yard line. I love the play call there from Michael Cava, understanding that there was no deep safety and therefore no help for Kobe Reese over the top. And Dampier put up a very, very catchable ball for Jake Johnson, and he was able to pull it down. It is officially marked a 45-yard gain, so just the second catch for Johnson now has 61 yards. Sometimes you just have to trust your playmaker to make plays. Campbellsville did it on their touchdown. Let Tate Pringle go up and make a play. This time, nothing fancy. Trust Jake Johnson to beat Kobe Reese, and that's exactly what happened. And Reese had good coverage there. Johnson just a little bit too much size and got that inside leverage for the game. Georgetown stymied in its previous trip into the red zone. Had to settle for a 32-yard field goal from Chris Klein. Johnson one-on-one -on -one near side once again. They're going to hand it off to Darius Barber. Nowhere to go as Kobe Reese just beat the block of Jake Johnson Little revenge right there, and Barber stuck back for a loss of five. Interesting play call there from Georgetown. The running game has not been working at all today, and Georgetown tried the sweep with Barber, and he loses five, and the Tigers will have to spend a time out here with 49 seconds to go in the half. Georgetown now 19 official runs in the half for negative 10 yards. And that yards per carry average just continues to get worse. Georgetown third worst in the country coming in today with 1.4 yards per carry. Campbellsville on their side, not much better. They are still in the negative as well. 10 carries minus one yard. Of course, 20 of those yards, 20 yards for Campbellsville came on that Tate Pringle fake punt. So now second down and 15 from the Campbellsville 20 yard line. After the Tigers spent a time out there, again, an interesting play call that time from offensive coordinator Michael Caba to try and run Darius Barber on the sweep. Barber came in today, only run the ball three times in the first three games. He's carried it four times today, but for minus five. Aaron Magger goes in motion, second and 15, and now a flag on the play, and Georgetown's backing up five more. Blake Gossett, the freshman out of Louisville, getting some time in here on this series on the offensive line, gets called for the flag. And so now what was a promising drive here is after the Jake Johnson 45-yard completion has just gone backwards. Gossett in at center. And there for Sam Dingle. Second and 20. Pressure coming, Dampier wants Jake Johnson. Again, another beautiful ball just out of the reach of Johnson. Good throw out there, but Kobe Reese in good coverage. It's been a fun battle between Johnson and Reese on this near side. 
It now makes it third and 20. 45 seconds to go in the half. Interesting decision here for Georgetown. If you don't get anything from here, you're looking at about a 42-yard field goal try with a slight wind at the back of Chris Klein. So do you try and get it all back here, or do you try and pick up some of the yardage and set Klein up for a better field goal try to tie the game? See what Georgetown dials up here on third and long. Dampier with pressure coming. Throwing it deep. Barber's out there. Has a step, but just a bit too far. Barber had broken free behind Kane Newland towards the corner of the end zone, and Dampier had a little too much mustard on it. And so it becomes fourth down, and Coach Cronin will send on Chris Klein to try one from about 42 yards on the right hash. Klein has a long in the season of 38. A little bit of wind in his back, but not really much to make a difference on the kick. Klein from 42 to tie the game. That is getting there. That's got the distance and right through. Well done, Chris Klein. He's connected from 32 and 42 here in the first half. And Chris Klein, the sophomore, has tied the game at six with 31 seconds to go in the half. A good job by Klein to get enough on that. Hit a couple of yards to spare, too. And that's a good sign going forward. Keep that in mind later in the game. If things get tight and Georgetown needs another long field goal, Klein now showing the coaching staff he can connect from beyond 40. 31 seconds to go in the half. Campbellsville has one timeout to use, and they will get the ball to start the second half. So I think the return here of the kickoff will probably dictate what Campbellsville does offensively. Campbellsville 92 yards here in the first half. This is a Campbellsville team does not put up a lot of points. They average just 18 points per game through the first three. Patrick Oden and Zion Kenner, two dangerous returners, will await the kick of Klein. A little more wind at his back this time, and it'll be a squiver of the middle. So Georgetown going to try not to give their playmakers a chance, but Oden will grab it out to the right side, trying to get out toward the far sideline. He'll be driven out of bounds just across the 35-yard line. So you've got a chance here if you're Campbellsville, 22.8 on the clock. How much trust do you put in your freshman quarterback Chase Elmore here before the half. It's an interesting spot here for Campbellsville. You're kind of in that no man's land. A more experienced quarterback, you may be safe for sure you're going to try and take at least one throw down the field and see what you get. But we also sometimes you don't want to put too much pressure on a true freshman, and that's the, the route Campbellsville is elected to take as Elmore will come out and simply just – Drop to a knee, which will bring the first half to an end. Coach Perry Thomas of Campbellsville saying, hey, let's go. Not going to run another play. And the first half comes to an end. Defenses have dominated the day thus far here at Toyota Stadium. Campbellsville's points coming off of an interception. Georgetown's only been able to muster two field goals. And thus, we are dead even at the break here at Toyota Stadium. Georgetown and Campbellsville has always been a good rivalry. Georgetown has dominated through the years, but Campbellsville hanging tough through the first half here today. We are tied at six on stretch. Here's how this will work. You'll watch this commercial, then look up Georgetown College. No, not that one, a Christian college in Kentucky. You'll be impressed with the school and your scholarship. You'll watch GC win yet another national championship with lifelong friends. You'll attend Oxford University. You'll take a class with that professor who blows your mind. You'll find your major and your career. You'll get internships and graduate, and your Georgetown degree will get you that first job or into grad school. You'll remember this as the moment that shaped your life. You're welcome. Think different. Think GC. Apply now at georgetowncollege.edu. It's not about classes just being harder. It's always about 
depth in a subject matter. We take all the excellent work that you've already done as a student wherever you are and then we supercharge it. We send you off to Oxford University where you work one-on-one -on -one with an Oxford professor. You come back with an entire worldview. What Georgetown College does exceptionally well is it gives students the opportunity to have an extraordinary research experience either here or any place else in the country. Last summer I got to participate in research at Marshall University and it was a super cool experience. This is like the main research I've done in college and this is pretty much what's going to get me to grad school. One of my favorite things about the honors program is that it really does feel like a family. You just have these bonds with each other that are unbreakable. Part of that care for you, however, is to try to urge you towards the highest skills and virtues that you've got to offer. Let's talk numbers. One, that's our ranking in Kentucky for the difference we make in our students' future earnings. Three, that's the number of years in a row we've been ranked as best in Kentucky for students getting their first job or into graduate school. 100, that's the percentage of fully qualified students from our pre-med program who get accepted into medical school. 30, that's the number of seconds it just took to change your life. Think different. Think GC. Apply for free at georgetowncollege.edu. I wanted to make sure I went to a college that could help me grow in my faith. Georgetown just encourages me. I've just learned to accept that we have different beliefs and we may believe different things within Christianity, but we all come together. When I came here and got to know the staff and faculty, I just felt like it was very personal. Ever since I've been here, I have grown closer to God. It has allowed me to grow further in my faith. When I was looking at Georgetown College, I found that they had a Christian Scholars program that kind of focused on vocation and a person's calling. Two things that have made it incredibly important about its history is its commitment to academics and its commitment to be faith-filled and help nurture this Christian identity. The way they see their, their role in the world uh, is greatly transformed from being a Christian to doing something as Christ would do for the world around them. Hello to all my good friends who might be watching or listening. This is John or Doc Blackburn again. Three years ago, I made a giving challenge which was very successful thanks to you all and have done it each of the past two years as well. Today I'm making my fourth challenge and I wanted to say a little bit about why I do this. I'm in the process of doing my taxes for last year and that entails looking at my income and expenses for the year. It occurs to me that I'm a microcosm of Georgetown College as far as finances go. It doesn't really matter how much I have at the moment. I must have a certain annual income to function each year. The college is like that, and the blood of the annual income that allows the college to function the way we want to function is the annual fund. Each year to pay my expenses, I rely on my income for the year. It's so with the college. The annual fund pays the bills and must be accrued every year for that purpose. This is why I'm again issuing my challenge. I will match your donations that come to the college by the annual day of giving, Tuesday, March 16, up to a total of $25,000 for the annual fund. That way, you and I can account for at least $50,000 of that fund and possibly much more, as has happened in the past three years. I'm proud and humbled by your response in fast and hope that you will again rise to the occasion. Thanks so much for your participation. 
Call and challenge your friends. Thank you.
We are at halftime at Toyota Stadium in a defensive battle. Georgetown and Campbellsville tied at six here at the half. Georgetown, all of its offense coming on the left foot of Chris Klein, connected from field goals from 32 and 42 yards here in the second quarter. Campbellsville's lone points of the game coming off of a Zach Dampier interception, and immediately Campbellsville took advantage. Chase Elmore finding Tate Pringle from 20 yards out. The extra point, no good from Campbellsville kicker Devin Neely. Hence, we have a score, a tie of six here in this one. Georgetown out gaining Campbellsville in the game, 149 to 92. Neither team in positive rushing yardage in the first half. Campbellsville minus one yard rushing on 11 attempts. Georgetown 19 rushes minus 10 yards. Of course, you do have to take in mind here at the collegiate level. Quarterback sacks are factored into the rushing totals, and those have been a big factor. Campbellsville is five sacks of Georgetown quarterbacks, the majority of those coming in the first quarter when Hunter Krauss was under center. That wound up in 29 yards of negative rushing for Georgetown. The Tigers of Georgetown got to Chase Elmore officially three times in the first half for total net loss of 16 yards on that one there. Quarterback play, Chase Elmore, 8 of 14, 93 yards and the touchdown to Tate Pringle. Pringle pulling in a sixth touchdown catch of the year. Only two catches for Pringle in the first half for 28. He did have a run for 20 on a fake punt that kept a Campbellsville drive alive that turned into nothing. Meanwhile, Georgetown has played two quarterbacks today. Hunter Krause saw action, really took the first quarter. Zach Dampier took the second quarter, and really not much to speak of for either. Hunter Krause, 6 of 11 for 56. Zach Dampier, 5 of 13 for 103. The longest being a 45-yard connection to Jake Johnson near the end of the half, which resulted in a 42-yard Chris Klein field goal. Dampier, as I mentioned, does have the interception that was turned around on the next play for a Campbellsville touchdown. Georgetown 4 of 12 on third down to the first half. Campbellsville 2 out of 7. Georgetown 2 of 4 on fourth down. Campbellsville 1 of 1. Georgetown's run 18 more plays than, Cam than has Campbellsville here in the first half, and yet we are tied at 6 as the Tigers have just never really been in sync offensively in the game, and it really started from the get-go as Hunter Krause was sacked three times on the opening drive of the game at Georgetown. Took nearly six minutes off the clock of and wound up turning it over on downs. Kobe Reese leading Campbellsville on the day with eight tackles. Micah Corley has been a stud up front for Campbellsville. Came into the day with no sacks on the season. In fact, Campbellsville had one sack as a team on the season. Corley had three and a half in the first half. And as I mentioned, Campbellsville five as a team in the first half. Andrew Bennett, six tackles, half a sack in the first half. Julius Jackson, the freshman, doing some nice work. Five tackles in the first half. Whole host of Tigers for Georgetown with three tackles. Zion Bethel, Peyton Standiford, Chad Holleran, Marcus Amasule. They've all also been around the quarterbacks as well. So defensive battle continues, and it was really the story of the first half as neither team's offensive line really provided much support for their quarterbacks. We know Georgetown defensive line goes deep, but really encouraging for Campbellsville to see their defensive line be able to get after the quarterback. And we touched at the top of the broadcast, both teams' offensive lines being really struggling, protecting their quarterbacks coming in. Georgetown had given up 13 sacks on the season coming in. Campbellsville had given up 14. And both those numbers still holding true in this one as Campbellsville had five sacks in the first half after one in its first three games. Georgetown got to the quarterback three times. Georgetown now on the season, 15 quarterback sacks through three and a half games of football. Still a few more minutes to go here in at halftime, but right now Georgetown and Campbellsville. And a bit of a surprise here, I think, for a lot of Georgetown fans. We are tied at Toyota Stadium, 6-6 on stretch.
There you get a look at Zach Dampier just finishing up his warm-ups here before the third quarter begins. Of course, we'll have to wait to see if he goes back out onto the field to start the second half for Georgetown or if it'll be Hunter Krause. Dampier in the first half, 5 of 13 for 103 and an interception. Standing there talking with Noah Kramer, who has been shut out here in the first half for Georgetown. In fact, wasn't even targeted in the first half. Darius Barber, 11 targets in the first half. He caught eight for 91. Jake Johnson, two catches for 61 yards. Aaron Maggard, one for seven, and that is it for Georgetown. Isaiah Cobb targeted twice in the first half and dropped both passes that came his way. Maggard, that one catch, he was only targeted that one time in the first half after a 10-catch game a week ago against Lindsey Wilson. He has not been a factor in this one. Isaiah Cobb leads Georgetown in rushing in the first half, five carries for 10 yards. Saw Zach Babb get his first couple of carries of the season in the first half, two for seven. Bryson Cobb, two for two. Darius Barber and Hunter Krause minus yardage in the first half. Of course, Krause a big factor there as he was sacked a bunch in the fir first quarter. So Georgetown will kick it off here to begin the third quarter after winning the toss and receiving. And Campbellsville will send back Patrick Oden and Zion Kenner to receive the kick. A little bit of wind starting to pick up again at the back of Klein. Been consistently blowing from left to right here at Toyota Stadium throughout the game, so again, keep that in mind later on if, if kicking becomes a factor. And, of course, we already saw Campbellsville's kicker, Devin Neely, miss an extra point. Good kick from Klein. He's going to chase Odin back inside his own five-yard line. He's going to try and take it out to the right side. And he is popped just across the 15-yard line by Will Thomas. Was banged up crossing the 10-yard line by Jacob Brass, and then Thomas came through with the pop to finish it off. So good coverage there from Georgetown. And Campbellsville will start inside his own 20. We saw Jordan Kimball for Georgetown a little shaken up. At the end of the play, though, able to jog off to the sideline, though. That's a good sign. And now Campbellsville back to work. Dawson Smothers started the game on the offensive line for this mash unit for Campbellsville. Still not in there. I think Campbellsville may have had to move another defensive lineman to the O-line here in this ballgame. Five wide for Elmore to start on first down. Pass to the near side is caught by Smith. He's out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Peyton Standifer in on the stop. Second catch of the day for Smith for nine yards. Nice easy throw for Elmore here in this one. That puts Chase Elmore out exactly 100 yards on the day on nine completions. Georgetown showing some pressure from the top side. Colin Smith looked like he was coming. Now the Tigers make their adjustment. Smith again, looks like he shifts inside a little bit. Now he's coming on some pressure. Heat coming on Elmore, slips through, and Elmore's going to do a good job to slip through, and he'll get the first down. Much more decisive movement that time from Chase Elmore. Saw him in the first half when pressure comes, looking to really just bail out and roll out one side or the other. This time he stepped through the defense and got a first down. That's nicely done there from the freshman Chase Elmore. He's been under a lot of duress here in the game, and really the first time we've seen him try and step through that Georgetown rush, it winds up being a gain of six on the play. Campbellsville looks to the sideline, get the adjustment from first-year offensive coordinator Chris Pardue. D.J. White coming from the weak side. Elmore throws it out to the far side. Pringle has the catch. Kyron Simpson chases him out of bounds at the 32-yard line, third catch of the day for Pringle. He has the Campbellsville lone touchdown. Just a gain of four. And now Simpson moves to the near side in coverage against Patrick Oden. So Zion Bethel will be one-on-one -on -one with Tate Pringle at the top side. Now Moore out to the far side again looking for Pringle. Look, he slipped coming out of his break. It'll be third down. Tate Pringle, junior out of San Bernardino, California, transferred in from San Bernardino Valley College. He is a junior and a fine transfer that Coach Perry Thomas has found from all the way out west. 
lot of new faces on this Campbellsville coaching staff here this season. You have a first-year offensive coordinator, Chris Pardue, who actually coached at Campbellsville a while back, coming back for a second round. Hunter Brown, the quarterback coach in his second year. Tyus Alcorn and Forrest Garner, wide receiver and O-line coaches. They are both in their first seasons at the helm here for Campbellsville as well. Elmore near side. That ball is caught out across the 35-yard line. Hollerin will sling down Zion Kenner. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the line to gain. So a good tackle in space by Hollerin. Makes it fourth down and two for Campbellsville. And at their own 36-yard line, Coach Perry Thomas will send on the punting unit and at least it sh at least show that they are going to kick this ball away. Remember in the first half, Tate Pringle from about this spot took the ball and on a fake punt ran it right side for a 20-yard gain. So Georgetown have to keep an eye out on him once again. Jake Johnson will stand at his own 25 should Pringle punt this ball away. Took a while to get going, but Pringle launches an angled one. Really nice kick out wide. It'll die just at about the Georgetown 26-yard line. So Pringle not taking any chances. Doesn't want to give Jake Johnson a chance to return that ball. And good coverage by Campbellsville down the field. So Georgetown will begin its second-half offense from its own 26-yard line. 11.58 to go in the third quarter. We are tied at six here at Toyota Stadium. And it will be Zach Dampier to start the second half. We've seen Hunter Krause really took all, every, every drive of the first quarter. It's been Dampier ever since. See what he can do here on this possession. Campbellsville likes to run single high safety. They do it here. Georgetown will look to run up the middle, and that is Isaiah Cobb. Falls forward just shy of the 30-yard line. Actually, they may go ahead and spot him the 30-yard line. We'll call it a gain of four on first down, make it second and six. Sixth carry of the day for Isaiah Cobb for 14. John Carruthers now checks out for Campbellsville after making the tackle there, and Cobb a little shaken up here. Freshman Jason Hagen will take his place at the linebacker spot. See if Georgetown can try and take advantage of that. Carruthers, I mean Campbellsville's leading tackler on the season coming into today with 30. It's still shaken up after that play, and he takes a knee behind the Campbellsville bench. Aaron Maggard comes in motion. Damp here. Nowhere to go, and throws it away, and Maggard in the area. And a good job by Damp here to get that ball away. Now the other question is, did that ball get to the line of scrimmage? And I think the officials will say it did, so no intentional grounding. Heat, though, coming once again from Dampier. And another play that took a while to develop. It'll be third and six for Georgetown, needing the 36-yard line. Tamir Jones to the top side has not been targeted here today. He's one-on-one -on -one at the top. Dampier, though, looking to the near side, across the middle. Barber has another catch. He's out across the 45-yard line. The ninth grab of the day for Darius Barber, and now catch number 30 on the season for the senior from E-Town. Toby Reese pushed him out at the 45-yard line, so a gain of 14 on the play for Barber. Should push Barber over the 100-yard mark, and it will. Nine for 106. Damp here. Play fake in the middle. Wide open is Aaron Maggard, and he was able to bring it in. That ball was thrown low at the ankles, and Aaron Maggard, just the second time he is targeted in the game, able to prick that one up off the shoelaces and turns into a gain of 21 for Georgetown. Great concentration there and great hands by Aaron Maggard to pull that in. That was a tough ball to handle off of a well-designed play. Fake the swing out wide. And then release Maggard down the seam. And Georgetown now moving a bit. Barber and Maggard continuing to carry it. Here's a play fake. Dampier, pressure coming. And near midfield will throw it to the near side. Kobe Reese out there. And Kobe Reese just put a bear hug on Jake Johnson. And a flag is going to come in. Dampier tried to put it out there in the area. And Johnson could never break back as Reese just wrapped two arms around the body of Jake Johnson. Passenger. 
It will be called pass interference instead of defensive holding. So 15-yard penalty will put the ball inside the 20-yard line, just the fourth penalty of the day against Campbellsville, but that's a big one. Johnson and Reese have been battling and hand fighting all day long. There was no hand fighting there what whatsoever as Johnson was on the near side and Reese just bear hugged. So the penalty moves the ball just inside the 20 yard line. They'll spot it now at the 19, really the 19 and a half. Georgetown again in the red zone. Tigers have had to settle for field goals their first two trips into the red zone. They'll want more here. Dampier wants it all instead. Jake Johnson, no. Dampier again has been just a little too long with those long balls to Johnson. Missed one on a similar play in the second quarter. Had an opportunity down here to Darius Barber. He threw long as well. And Johnson has a height advantage there on Reese. And at some point, you just got to tell Dampier, put a little more loft underneath it and trust Johnson to go up over the top of Reese to catch that. We've seen Johnson in the past be able to go up over multiple defenders to be able to pull balls down in those situations. But that time, Dampier a little too far, second and 10. Hand up the middle, and Bryson Cobb, not much there as Micah Corley swallows him up, and his excellent game continues. Not much doing there. A gain of one. Brings up another third and long situation. Georgetown 5 of 13 on third down. That's a win for Campbellsville as well. Campbellsville came in today giving up 46% on third down. Georgetown started the day 2 for 2. On third down, since then, 3 of 11. Barber comes in motion. Dampier over the middle, and that ball somehow pulled down inside the six-yard line by Will Thomas. Tight coverage, and Thomas able to pull it in. Great grab on the play. Will Thomas's first catch of the ball game. That was a ball ripped out of the hand of Dampier. In tight coverage, and good job by Thomas to scoop that one off the turf. Setting up Georgetown first and goal from the six-yard line, 8.45 to go in the third quarter, and Georgetown looking to move ahead. Georgetown will go with an unbalanced line. Barber comes in motion. They'll toss it out to him. Barber, not much there. Maybe he got to the five-yard line as Andrew Bennett forced him out wider than he wanted to go. Interesting, Georgetown runs a sweep there to the short side of the field with the added blocking on that side. Seen really throughout the, the, ten, the last couple of years, Georgetown runs that unbalanced line. They like to run against it to the weak side. They have not done that here today. They give Barber a gain of one on the play, and you'll see the same formation here. Unbalanced line, strong side right. Jake Johnson, the lone receiver. Barber and Isaiah Cobb in the backfield. Maggard in motion. Damp here. Into the middle, Barber got it for the touchdown. Tight coverage, but Darius Barber able to pull it in, and his big day continues. It's his 10th grab for 111 yards, and now a touchdown, his second receiving touchdown of the season. Good drive for Georgetown. They take advantage of the pass interference call against Kobe Reese, and find pay dirt in the end zone as Dampier has his second passing touchdown of the season. Chris Klein on for the extra point. No problem whatsoever. Zach Dampier to Darius Barber from six yards out. And Darius Barber having himself a ball game. Ten catches, 111 yards, and now a touchdown. Georgetown moves in front, 13-6 on stretch.
Georgetown finally finds the end zone as Zach Dampier hits Darius Barber from five yards out. Georgetown leads 13 to six. And a fair catch called for inside the 10. That's an auto touchback now in college football. And Darius Barber having himself a big game, finally getting a chance to catch, him, catch his breath on the sideline. He has had a busy day. 15 total touches, 107 yards, and now a touchdown. He has been Mr. Reliable receiving the ball on the year for Georgetown. Came into today, 21 catches for 275. Today, 10 for 111 after an eight-catch, 98-yard performance a week ago. Now it's Campbellsville's turn to try to respond and try and get some offense going. Their only offense came off of a Georgetown turnover, resulted in their only points from 20 yards out. They have not really been able to sustain an offensive drive all game long. Elmore will go with trips right, Odin to the left. They'll swing it out wide to Smith. Good block out wide, and he is banged down. Smith is at the 31-yard line by Rob Sheffield, who came in flying from the top. Also, Trevor Brock with some pursuit from behind. It'll be a gain of six on the play. Smith's third catch of the day for 15 yards. Elmore now an efficient 12 of 19 for 114. From the 31, Elmore throwing all the way to the near side. That is caught by Odin, and he has a first down to the 37-yard line. Easy pitch and catch there as he beats today Jones-Wilson on the slant. Odin's fourth grab, so... Elmore doing a nice job spreading the ball around here today. Odin leads the team and now catches with four. Kenner, Pringle, and Smith each with three. Makes it hard to game plan for, but you're also seeing here Elmore getting the ball out quicker. Taylor Hutt comes in motion. Elmore, quick release again. That is caught again by Smith, and he is slung down by Standifer at the 41-yard line. Another small gain of four here. But I think Campbellsville understanding that this offensive line, which has been decimated by injuries, has struggled in the first half against this Georgetown pressure. Start making some quick, shorter throws. Make it easier for your true freshman to get into a rhythm here as now you're trailing by seven. Elmore rolling out right into the middle of the zone and is pulled down out wide by Kenner, and he is into Georgetown territory at the 44-yard line. Good job by... Kenner to sit down between the corner and the nickelback for a first down. Gain of 15 on the play, and that is Zion Kenner's fourth catch of the day for 56. A good response here early in this drive by Chase Elmore, but you've got to be able to seal the deal. So far, though, good, good work for Campbellsville. Elmore near side, and Kenner had to bring that one as it bobbled on arrival, slipped through a couple defenders. He's out across the 35 to the 33-yard line. Bryce Bowen brings him down there, but it'll be a gain of 11 and another first down for Campbellsville. Again, short, easy passes for Elmore to make. And you wonder at what point... Does Campbellsville try and take advantage of that and try and maybe go over the top? Elmore out wide, wants Pringle on the short curl. He has it. Holleran will meet him at the 30-yard line, but Pringle will fall forward to the 28. And another good gain for Campbellsville here. Call it six on first down to make it second and four. 5.25 to go in the third. Campbellsville is on the move. It'll be five wide once again for Elmore. Trying the hard count to draw Georgetown off. It doesn't work, and now Elmore looks to the sideline for an adjustment to, as he gets an early read on the Georgetown defense. Ten seconds on the play clock. Playing into the sun. We'll see if that becomes a factor here as well. Elmore again, quick out to the far side. Pringle is met upon catching the ball by Zion Bethel, who just completely walked right through Zion Kenner's block attempt and drilled Pringle, but then a flag comes in late, and Campbellsville is liking that. Bethel made the stop. Bowen was also out there for Georgetown trying to make a play. But a flag came in that late. Usually that's 
of the unsportsmanlike variety. And it is indeed Bryce Bowen called for an unsportsmanlike, so that is his first of those penalties of the day. In college football, you get two unsportsmanlike penalties. It is an automatic ejection. So not sure what Bowen did on the play there, as Bethel made a terrific play there on the tackle of Pringle. But in, in essence, the play wiped out. 15-yard penalty sets Campbellsville up at the Georgetown 14-yard line on the Tigers' fourth penalty of the day. Elmore, play fake, wants Pringle over the middle and pulled it in. No, he did not. Good ball in there, and Pringle just unable to secure it, maybe a little lower than he would have liked. Bethel in coverage. But I think if Pringle's able to secure that one in, I think he falls forward into the end zone. I think it's one Pringle would like to have back. A little bit low on the throw, but still a very catchable ball. Potential break for Georgetown. Let's see what Campbellsville comes up with here on second and ten. Pringle again to the top side, one-on-one -on -one with Bethel. Bowen, the single high safety for Georgetown. Starting to shade to that side. Elmore under pressure, getting away from White. Standifer hustling. Standifer going to bring him down and chase him out of bounds. Terrific closing speed from Peyton Standifer from his inside linebacker spot to run Elmore out of bounds. It'll be a loss of five back to the 19-yard line. Great play from Standifer. Realized that there was nothing else left to do for Elmore but run the ball, and Standifer was there in a heartbeat. It'll make it third and 14. They actually moved the ball now to the 18-yard line, so third and 14 from the 18. 4-10 to go here in the third quarter. Four wide for Elmore. Taylor Hutt in the backfield as Smith comes in motion. Low snap. Elmore in, in trouble. Roxvag coming, and Roxvag's going to get him back at the 27-yard line, and that is a big play in itself. That likely takes Campbellsville out of field goal range. See where they spot the ball. They're actually going to spot him forward at the 25-yard line. See, if, see what Campbellsville does here. They have not attempted a field goal on the season, and it doesn't look like they will here. It'll be fourth and 21 from the 25-yard line. 3.20 to go in the third quarter. Elmore looking at the sideline. Play clock down to eight. Campbellsville, I think, is going to have to take a timeout here. Down to one. They will get it off. Elmore on fourth down. Going to heave it to the end zone. And that ball out of bounds and incomplete as they were looking for Paul McCown on the near side. Actually, that was Spencer McCowan, beg your pardon. They're incomplete. First target for McCowan of the day, but really not much else that Campbellsville could do right there other than take a shot to the end zone. So the Georgetown defense holds, and you go back to that first down play when Pringle dropped what could have been a touchdown, and Campbellsville really went backwards from there. Great pressure from Georgetown getting in on a couple of pressures on Elmore on the drive from Standifor and then Roxvag. So the Tigers get the ball back at their own 25-yard line with three minutes to go in the third quarter and leading Campbellsville 13-6. Push pass out wide to Isaiah Cobb. Cannot get out wide. John Carruthers read it all the way. Georgetown tried that a couple of times last week against Lindsey Wilson and had no success whatsoever on it. And here the Tigers lose two. Damp here near side, there's Barber again. He has been magnificent and then some. He's out across the 45 to the 47 yard line and now a flag comes in late. And I'm wondering if the officials decided that Barber was hit out of bounds on the play. Looked very close on the sideline. Kandarius Major was the one that chased Barber out. 
And they are indeed calling it a late hit out of bounds on Major. So tack 15 more onto the play and what was a 24-yard gain. Barber continues to prove to be unstoppable in this game. That is his 11th catch on, in the game. The penalty moves it to the Campbellsville 37-yard line as we approach two minutes to go in the third quarter. Fifth penalty of the day against CU. Puts Georgetown in better position. Dampier on the handoff up the middle to Zach Babb. Babb, two hands over the ball, lowers the shoulder. Does what he did on his first carry of the game, picks up seven. Nothing fancy about the running there from Zach Babb. He's a big guy in that backfield, 6'3", 210 pounds. Ball now sits at the Campbellsville 30-yard line as we go under 90 seconds to play in the third quarter and Georgetown trying to extend its lead to two scores. Why not give it to Babb once again? He'll lower his legs, he'll move the chains again. Good, tough running from Zach Babb. Giving Georgetown a bit of physicality in the run game that's not been there. Picks up five. He'll come out now. And Isaiah Cobb will take his place. Good hard running on back-to-back -back carries for Zach Babb. Keep doing that there, and he's going to earn himself some more playing time in the coming weeks. Dampier this time in the gun. F fakes the toss out wide and fall forward to the 24-yard line. Carruthers meets him there, gain of one. Actually, no, they spot it back at the 25-yard line, so no gain on the play for Dampier. 25 seconds remaining. It has been all Zach Dampier since really the start of the second quarter offensively for Georgetown. This will likely be the final play of the quarter. Dampier out wide and trying to get it out there to Kramer, and he was just swallowed up out wide by Malcolm Walker. And it'll end up being third down, and we will get at least one more play in. Is there are eight seconds to go in the quarter? I think they were trying to get Kramer on a double move, like a slant and go. And Walker was all over it there, and Kramer could never get disengaged within the five yards from line of scrimmage. Georgetown needs the Campbellsville 15-yard line. Tigers 6 of 14 on third down on the day. Kramer again out to the top side. Jake Johnson back in. He's at the bottom, matched up once again with Kobe Reese. Maggard in motion. Pressure coming. Dampier wants it all down the sideline. Double coverage, and Johnson couldn't pull it in with one hand. Good closing there by Campbellsville on the play. Right, safety, Roal Walker. Roel Whitaker, I should say, came in late to provide some extra help. And Georgetown will once again send Chris Klein on. He connected from 42 in the second quarter right at this exact spot. He'll try it from the same distance here. Not much win to speak of. Trying to give Georgetown a 10-point lead. Another good ball. From Klein, it is up and it is good again. A flag comes in as Klein got hit on the play. Malcolm Walker took out Klein's feet on the play and Georgetown will likely take the field goal off the board and advance the ball on what will likely be a 15-yard roughing the kicker penalty against Malcolm Walker. We'll wait and see here on the official call, but I would think if you're Georgetown, you're going to take the field goal off the board if this is the 15-yard penalty. And that's exactly what will happen here is Georgetown will take the points off the board. So make it, it'll stay 13-6 in favor of Georgetown. And with the penalty being against the defense here, we will have one untimed down here to end the third quarter. Clock showing zero, but the quarter cannot end on a defensive penalty, so Georgetown will get one crack here in this end zone. The ball placed at the 13-yard line. 
Klein had plenty of distance on that field goal, too, and Walker coming in for the block just took out Klein's legs. Dampier under center, hands it off to Zach Babb, lowers his shoulder, trying to push the pile. He'll move inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Babb continues to run hard and giving Georgetown some much-needed physicality as he and Carruthers got tangled up there at the 9, and that will bring the third quarter to an end. So Georgetown keeping the ball on offense, turning down the three points. They'll look to extend it to a two-score lead on the other side of the quarter break. We're headed to the fourth here at Toyota Stadium. Georgetown 13, Campbellsville 6 on stretch. It's not about classes just being harder. It's always about depth in a subject matter. We take all the excellent work that you've already done as a student wherever you are and then we supercharge it. We send you off to Oxford University where you work one-on-one -on -one with an Oxford professor. You come back with an entire world view. What Georgetown College does exceptionally well is it gives students the opportunity to have an extraordinary research experience either here or any place else in the country. Last summer I got to participate in research at Marshall University and it was a super cool experience. This is like the main research I've done in college, and this is pretty much what's gonna get me to grad school. One of my favorite things about the honors program is that it really does feel like a family. You just have these bonds with each other that are unbreakable. Part of that care for you, however, is to try to urge you towards the highest skills and virtues that you've got to offer. Fourth quarter about to begin. Georgetown looking to punch the ball into the end zone. Tigers that converted on a 42-yard field goal, but a roughing the kicker call winds up in Bill Cronin taking those points off the board and looking for the end zone. Second down and six from the nine. And Zach Dampier right side. Dampier has space inside the five. Zach Dampier into the end zone for the Georgetown touchdown. Great toughness on the play from Dampier. Eluding a couple of tacklers, and Coach Cronin indeed makes the right decision to take the field goal off the board, and the Tigers punch it into the end zone on the first play of the fourth quarter. Chris Klein on for the extra point, but that'll be just a moment. We have two injured Campbellsville Tigers on the play. One up near the seven-yard line, one all the way back near the 25-yard line for Campbellsville. Not often do you see Zach Dampier tuck it and run, but did not have an option and slipped out the right side, able to punch his way into the end zone. Well done there by Zach Dampier. Just the third rushing touchdown of Dampier's career and first in two years. Looking here at Campbellsville. Looks like Roel Whitaker, one of the players shaken up on the play for Campbellsville, and also Ethan Gossage. Gossage able to walk off under his own power. Whitaker needs a little bit of help. Chris Klein now on for the extra point. He was a little shaken up after being taken out on the field goal try on the other end of the field, but on here for the PAT. No problem. So Georgetown takes a bit of a risk, giving up three points, but it winds up paying off as Zach Dampier runs it in from nine yards out. And we are just a few seconds into the fourth quarter. Georgetown has now extended the lead. Georgetown 20, Campbellsville 6 on stretch. Here's how this will work. You'll watch this commercial, then look up Georgetown College. No, not that one, a Christian college in Kentucky. You'll be impressed with the school and your scholarship. You'll watch GC win yet another national championship with lifelong friends. You'll attend Oxford University. You'll take a class with that professor who blows your mind. You'll find your major and your career. You'll get internships and graduate, and your Georgetown degree will get you that first job or into grad school. You'll remember this as the moment that shaped your life. You're welcome. Think different. Think GC. Apply now at georgetowncollege.edu.
Zach Dampier needs just one play in the fourth quarter to extend Georgetown's lead. And now the Tigers of Georgetown, that is, lead by two touchdowns, 20-6. to six. And now a squib kick from Klein. Don't want those Campbellsville return men to get a hold of it. And Smith, Howard Smith, squirts through the initial pursuit of the Georgetown kick return. It was a nice job to get Campbellsville some good field position out here to the 40-yard line. like the idea there from Georgetown. Credit to Howard Smith making a fine play. Now it's Campbellsville's turn to try to respond. Got to try and put something together here if you're the Campbellsville Tigers. Previous drives showed some promise as Campbellsville was able to move the ball thanks to short, quick throws from Chase Elmore, but broke down in the Georgetown red zone and wound up in a turnover on downs. Elmore back out, 18 of 27, 155 yards, and a touchdown. Looked much more comfortable on that previous drive with those short, quick throws as well. He'll have Kenner in motion on the sweep, and Chad Holler and read it all the way, and Kenner was dead to rights in the backfield, a loss of four. What a read by Chad Holler and the true freshman coming flying in from that inside linebacker spot and burying Kenner in the backfield. Holleran has been fantastic in his first year in the black and orange. Low snap, Elmore looking out to the far side and that is pulled down out wide by Odin. And he is slung down out of bounds by Kyron Simpson. Campbellsville bunch wants a penalty for some late activity there, but the officials say no. And Odin gets the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10 on Odin's fifth catch of the day. Campbellsville two for nine on third down, really right at about their season average on third down conversions today. They need the 49, Elmore with pressure, going to get out of it initially. Amasule in coverage, and ball down the field. What a grab by Howard Smith on a great throw by Chase Elmore. Easily Elmore's best throw of the day. And Smith able to get it for a gain of 17. On the run, led Smith perfectly. Great hands by Howard Smith to catch that one and secure it before hitting the ground. A big conversion for Campbellsville. Trips left for Elmore, he's rolling out that side. Stepping up, now stepping back, and Roxvac hitting from behind right as Elmore threw it into the bench. Good recognition by Elmore, understood. Pressure was coming from behind in a hurry, and he threw it away. The thing I've been impressed with, too, with Elmore is he is not forcing throws in the face of pressure. If it's not there, he has been more than comfortable with throwing it away. You don't see that very often from a true freshman. Unfortunately, that's something he's had to get used to, particularly the last two weeks. You go back to the start of last week's game against Bethel, and Elmore's been sacked 14 times. He's been sacked five today under duress a lot more. And this one, a bad ball here. And Colin Smith with an easy interception. Elmore, after making a veteran move on the throwaway, makes a freshman mistake on this throw and threw it right into the chest of Colin Smith. And Georgetown gets the ball back off the turnover. Really the first bad decision Elmore has made today. And Campbellsville pays the price for it. It's the Campbellsville Tigers' second turnover of the afternoon. Dampier back out. He'll have Bryson Cobb in the backfield on first down. And Georgetown really... Look to drop the hammer on this drive. Near side, Aaron Maggard has the catch into Campbellsville territory at the 46-yard line. I think Georgetown might have got a break there as looked like Max Hill was beaten on the right side of the line and reached out and grabbed the arm of Micah Corley. Fortunately there for Georgetown, a holding call wasn't to be had as Corley had gotten around Hill again. Tigers have done a much better job on Corley since the start of the second quarter. You go back to the first quarter when Hunter Krause was in at quarterback. Corley was in his lunch really the entire quarter. Zach Babb in the backfield on first down. He'll get the carry, two hands over it, and he'll fall forward across the 45 to the 44-yard line. 
Gain of two. Babb, the leading rusher for Georgetown of the day. Six totes of the rock for 25. Sams and Carruthers in to combine on the stop for on Bab that place. Second and eight. Tamir Jones to the near side, one-on-one -on -one with Reese. Georgetown has not looked his way the entire game, and now Maggard out wide, the double pass, Jake Johnson wide open down the field, and he will cruise into the end zone. What a call from offensive coordinator Michael Caba pulling out the tricks. And Aaron Maggard has himself a touchdown pass to Jake Johnson from 44 yards out. Oh, what a play call. Great ball from Dampier to lead Maggard exactly where he needed to go, and the entire Campbellsville defense bit on it. You could see that play being set up all day long with all those swing passes Georgetown had run. And now they go for the trickeration, and Jake Johnson has one of the easier touchdowns of his career. And the Georgetown offense has found its rhythm here in the second half. The extra point from Chris Klein up and good. Aaron Maggard, a 44-yard touchdown pass to Jake Johnson, and all of a sudden with 11.43 to go in the fourth, it is all Georgetown. They lead Campbellsville 27-6 on stretch. Let's talk numbers. One, that's our ranking in Kentucky for the difference we make in our students' future earnings. Three, that's the number of years in a row we've been ranked as best in Kentucky for students getting their first job or into graduate school. 100, that's the percentage of fully qualified students from our pre-med program who get accepted into medical school. 30, that's the number of seconds it just took to change your life. Think different. Think GC. Apply. What a great play call from offensive coordinator Michael Caba. And now Campbellsville in a world of trouble. Thought at the end of the third, things were going pretty well for Campbellsville. They had held Georgetown to a field goal and then the rough and the kicker penalty Georgetown takes advantage of it, and it has been the Georgetown offense getting its momentum ever since. Jaden Barnhart in on the stop on the return for Campbellsville, and they will begin this possession on their own 30-yard line. We'll see you trailing 27-6 with 11.38 to go in the ballgame. Georgetown with 14 points here in the first three minutes and 22 seconds of the third quarter. And now a low snap. And, oh, my goodness, is Elmore crushed in the backfield by Colin Smith. They'll say the ball is down, but that is irrelevant here as a low snap. And Colin Smith just came through and leveled Chase Elmore. And Elmore has not moved since the hit. Smith was coming on the rush anyway, and the low snap from center Ethan Gossage just left his quarterback in a world of trouble, and Chase Elmore is down. We're going to step aside while the training staff tends to quarterback Chase Elmore. I wanted to make sure I went to a college that could help me grow in my faith. Georgetown just encourages me. I've just learned to except that we have different beliefs and we may believe different things within Christianity, but we all come together. When I came here and got to know the staff and faculty, I just felt like it was very personal. Ever since I have been here, I have grown closer to God. It has allowed me to grow further in my faith. When I was looking at Georgetown College, I found that they had a Christian Scholars program that kind of focused on vocation and a person's calling. Two things that have made it incredibly important about its history is its commitment to academics, and its commitment to be faith-filled and help nurture this Christian identity. The way they see their, their role in the world uh, is greatly transformed from being a Christian 
into doing something as Christ would do for the world around them. Scary situation here at Toyota Stadium as Chase Elmore took a massive hit on the last play by Georgetown's Colin Smith off of a low snap. And as soon as Elmore picked up the ball, Smith was right there and leveled Elmore. And he Elmore is down and has not really moved uh, since the hit was taken. In fact, the EMTs on site are now on the field here attending to Chase Elmore. And a hush has fallen over uh, Toyota Stadium. Uh, both teams, players, as you can see, down on a knee. And, in fact, they're bringing out the uh, the board and now a stretcher uh, out for Chase Elmore. This is a frightening situation on a, a clean play, a hard hit from Colin Smith, just bad timing when Elmore came up from a low snap. And Smith was right there to meet him, and as soon as Elmore went down, he did not move. It looks like they moved him onto his back, but the EMTs, attending to Campbellsville quarterback Chase Elmore. And we will step aside once more while they tend to him. Georgetown leads Campbellsville 27-6, but right now the priority is the health of Campbellsville quarterback Chase Elmore. We're back in a minute. Here's how this will work. You'll watch this commercial, then look up Georgetown College. No, not that one, a Christian college in Kentucky. You'll be impressed with the school and your scholarship. You'll watch GC win yet another national championship with lifelong friends. You'll attend Oxford University. You'll take a class with that professor who blows your mind. You'll find your major and your career. You'll get internships and graduate, and your Georgetown degree will get you that first job or into grad school. You'll remember this as the moment that shaped your life. You're welcome. Think different. Think GC. Apply now at georgetowncollege.edu. It's not about classes just being harder. It's always about depth in a subject matter. We take all the excellent work that you've already done as a student wherever you are, and then we supercharge it. We send you off to Oxford University where you work one-on-one -on -one with an Oxford professor. You come back with an entire worldview. What Georgetown College does exceptionally well is it gives students the opportunity to have an extraordinary research experience either here or any place else in the country. Last summer, I got to participate in research at Marshall University and it was a super cool experience. This is like the main research I've done in college, and this is pretty much what's gonna get me to grad school. One of my favorite things about the honors program is that it really does feel like a family. You just have these bonds with each other that are unbreakable. Part of that care for you, however, is to try to urge you towards the highest skills and virtues that you've got to offer. Let's talk numbers. One, that's our ranking in Kentucky for the difference we make in our students' future earnings. Three, that's the number of years in a row we've been ranked as best in Kentucky for students getting their first job or into graduate school. 100, that's the percentage of fully qualified students from our pre-med program who get accepted into medical school. 30, that's the number of seconds it just took to change your life. Think different. Think GC. Apply for free at georgetowncollege.edu. I wanted to make sure I went to a college that could help me grow in my faith. Georgetown just encourages me. I've just learned to accept that we have different beliefs and we may believe different things within Christianity, but we all come together. When I came here and got to know the staff and faculty, I just felt like it was very personal. 
Ever since I have been here, I have grown closer to God. It has allowed me to grow further in my faith. When I was looking at Georgetown College, I found that they had a Christian Scholars program that kind of focused on vocation and a person's calling. Two things that have made it incredibly important about its history is its commitment to academics and its commitment to be faith-filled and help nurture this Christian identity. The way they see their, their role in the world uh, is greatly transformed from being a Christian to doing something as Christ would do for the world around them. Welcome back to Toyota Stadium. Quarterback Chase Elmore of Campbellsville uh, has been loaded up onto a stretcher here. See teammates coming around and uh, wishing him well after a frightening hit from Georgetown's Colin Smith. Nothing malicious on the play at all as Elmore picked up a low snap and as soon as he stood up, Smith was right there to meet him. And I can see across the way, just from my viewpoint here, just out of view of our camera, uh, Elmore just gave a thumbs up to everybody here at Toyota Stadium. And that's the best thing you could wish for in a situation like this off of a scary, scary situation. And Elmore will be taken to a local medical facility for further treatment there. But a wicked hit with the best news you could possibly hope for in that situation is to see Elmore put a thumbs up as he was being wheeled off, and we certainly want to send along our best to Chase Elmore for a quick recovery, and hopefully it's nothing overly serious that forces him to miss time. But above all else, you just want him to be get back to full health as quickly as possible. Just an unbelievable shot he took on the play. He will head out and be loaded into an ambulance and be taken to a medical facility for further evaluation. Back on the field, Josh Meglis will step in at quarterback for Campbellsville. Meglis is a sophomore out of Chapel Hill, Tennessee. He will hand off on the first play to Taylor Hutt and not much doing on that play. Understandably, a much quieter Toyota Stadium here right now after the injury to Chase Elmore. Josh Meglis on the season, throwing the ball one of six for 16 yards. Holler in it on the stop on that play. It makes it third down and 14 from the Campbellsville 26 yard line. Meglis fumbles that snap and DJ White's gonna put him down to the backfield for a sack back at the 21 yard line. It's the seventh sack of the day for the Georgetown defense and Campbellsville will send on its punting unit. Tate Pringle will come on to punt it away one more time. This will be Pringle's sixth punt of the day. Jake Johnson will stand at his own 44-yard line. 
Good kick here, and Johnson pulls in the fair catch at the Georgetown 41-yard line. So Georgetown gets the ball back with a three-score lead and 10 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the football game. Tigers looking to move to 3-1 and one on the season ahead of next week's game with the Bethel Wildcats right here at Toyota Stadium. We will have the broadcast for you here on stretch. Once again, a 3.30 kickoff next Friday here at Toyota Stadium. What we, will be the final home game of the season for Georgetown, so it will also be senior day. So you want to make sure you're tuned in early for that one. Georgetown back to work offensively. Zach Dampiers looked good here in the second half. Xavier Abernathy getting a carry here, and he pushes out to the left side. First carry of the day for Abernathy, and now a flag comes in late and behind the play. And Georgetown signaling this is against Campbellsville. We'll wait and see on the official call here. Ten sixteen to go in the game. Penalty is called on Bryce Mumphrey, the nose tackle for Campbellsville. It is a personal foul, so 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. It'll be an automatic first down for Georgetown, the seventh penalty of the day against Campbellsville for 70 yards. Ball moves to the Campbellsville 42-yard line. Dampier under center this time. And up the middle, and this is Jalen Lumpkin down the left sideline, making some space inside the 15-yard line. A big, big run there for Lumpkin. David Buckley saves a touchdown on the first carry of the season for Jalen Lumpkin, it's also Georgetown's longest run of the season by a long shot, a 28-yard run on the play by Lumpkin. Previous long in the season for Georgetown had been 13. Lumpkin gets rewarded with another carry. He falls forward for three to the 11-yard line. Nine twenty remaining. Georgetown continues to have all of the momentum here in the fourth quarter. The Tigers have already put two scores on the board here in the first six minutes of the third quarter, and they're looking for more. Xavier Abernathy now into the backfield on this play for Georgetown. Thomas Johnson, number 46, in at wingback. Georgetown looking a, more, a little more ground and pound here. Abernathy not much, though. May have fallen forward to the eleven. And make it third down in about seven. Tigers six of 15 on third down. Bennett in on the stop for Campbellsville. He's been a busy man here today. He had six tackles at the half, so he'll be easily be in double digits once again. Second leading tackler on the season for Campbellsville behind John Carruthers. Third and seven, Georgetown needs the Campbellsville four-yard line to keep the drive alive. Will Thomas will be the lone receiver to the top side. Aaron Magger to the slot. Here he comes in motion. Magger going to get it. Bobbled the handle. Gets a block from Abernathy, and Magger get, just gets across the 10 to the nine-yard line where it will be fourth down and five. And it looks like here we'll see what Georgetown elects to do. And Georgetown will send on its field goal unit. Chris Klein will come on, connected from 32 and 42 yards, both back in the second quarter. Those going to the opposite end of the field, his first field goal try down on this end will officially be from 26 yards. Cade Mullins will hold it. They have to pull it a little bit, not a dead center shot. Klein, though, gets it up, and no good off to the right. Klein's trying to say it was good. It went high above the uprights on that right side, but the officials say... No good, so the first missed field goal of the season for Chris Klein. And Campbellsville gets a hold defensively, but Campbellsville still trailing in the game 27-6, to 
and having to operate with Josh Meglis in at quarterback after Chase Elmore took a brutal hit by Colin Smith earlier in the quarter and had to be taken out via ambulance. And again, we certainly send our best along to Chase Elmore. Meglis back on now for Campbellsville. See you down three scores. Handoff is to Taylor Hutt. Third carry of the day for Hutt. He crosses the 20 out to the 22-yard line. Gain of a couple on the play. Campbellsville still a negative yardage rushing on the day. 19 carries minus 17 yards. Meglis will throw here and near side. That is caught by Pringle and he is out to the 40-yard line as Rob Sheffield went for the interception and Pringle able to beat him to the spot. It'll be a gain of 19 on the play. Only if Sheffield gets there a half a step earlier, he has himself a walk-in pick six. But as it stands, Meglis had enough mustard on the ball to find Tate for a gain of 19. Tate out the six catches for 57. Here is Hutt at the middle, and he is met and slammed down to the ground by Sander Roxvag and Peyton Standifer just across the 40-yard line. Six ten remaining here at Toyota Stadium. Georgetown that far away from going to three and one on the season. Campbellsville today is going to go home for two weeks to take on Cumberlands and then Lindsey Wilson. Here's a ball in the middle. Zion Kenner has it. Kenner into Georgetown territory, deep into Georgetown territory. Is pulled down at the Georgetown twenty five yard line. A gain of thirty three on the play, and Campbellsville's offense starting to show a little bit of life here as Zion Kenner has his sixth catch of the game and the longest play of the day for Campbellsville on that 33-yard catch and run. Meglis going to keep it this time on the read option. He goes down just inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. A gain of six as we move under five minutes and 30 seconds to go here at Toyota Stadium. Meglis having to go all the way to the sideline there to get the call, so that's going to take some more time off the clock here. Campbellsville doesn't have a lot of time to waste. Got to get scores in a hurry. Meglis wants it all to the near side, and Pringle backpedaling and lost his balance and went down. Not sure if he would have been able to get there anyway as Meglis floated that one to the sideline. Kyron Simpson in coverage for Georgetown. Like the idea there. Similar story to how Pringle caught the touchdown pass in the second quarter, just a jump ball, but lost his balance as he was backpedaling. So it makes the situation now third and four with Campbellsville needing the Georgetown 15-yard line, 4.59 to go in the ballgame. Sun starting to fade here at Toyota Stadium. Lights becoming more prevalent. Meglis hit as he throws, and the receiver on the far side, Patrick Oden slipped as the ball was a bit behind him. It'll be fourth down and four. And Campbellsville, again, will need four yards to keep the drive alive. Otherwise, the ball goes back to Georgetown. Four wide receivers for Meglis. Hut in the backfield. Pringle and Kenner on the right. Now Smith comes in motion, leaving Odin out wide to the left. And that ball knocked down, incomplete, a bang-bang play as Sheffield got there right as the ball did and collided with Smith, and the ball will go over on downs. Close call there. Look like Sheffield may have arrived just a tick early. Sometimes you will see the defender get called for interference on that play. As at least from my eye, it looked like Sheffield got there just a hair early. The officials say it was simultaneous, and Georgetown will get the ball back leading 27-6 with 4 minutes and 51 seconds to go in the game. See at Georgetown, if anything, here on this drive now, you're looking to work some clock. Jalen Lumpkin back into the game in at that super back spot that Bill Cronin likes to refer to. 
behind Damp here. See if we can start get the running game going here in this one for Georgetown. Tigers now at 56 yards rushing on the day on 34 attempts. 1.6 yards per carry. Play fake, Dampier, near side and wide open on the near side. That pass is complete. Pulled down by Tucker Woolham. Junior wing back. First time we've called Woolham's name. He's a junior out of Pineville High School. Getting some action here late in this one with Georgetown in control and just looking to burn some clock off. Gets the catch there or some good yardage. Dampier still looking to throw out wide, and that one is pulled in on the far side by Thomas Johnson, the sophomore wing back, making himself a play. Johnson out of Indianapolis, Indiana, making a catch. So Georgetown getting some of the younger guys. Some good experience here late in this one. And you're also seeing Dampier throwing it a little bit more, I think, Right now, you're just trying to get Dampier into a rhythm going into next week's game against Bethel. Dampier is the, the only quarterback on the field since the second quarter began. Hunter Krause played the first quarter. Not really much to speak of for Krause. Six of 11 for 56. It's been all Dampier since. 13 of 25, 225. One touchdown and one pick. It looks like the way things have gone today, Dampier might have solidified himself as the QB as QB1. Here is Lumpkin. Rumbling into Campbellsville territory. He's down just shy of the 45-yard line. A gain of six on the play for Lumpkin as we have three minutes and 30 seconds remaining here at Toyota Stadium. Carruthers in on another stop. Dampier under center, hands off to Lumpkin, going to bounce out wide. Some space out there. Jay Lumpkin gets a first down, but likely this is going to come back. There's a flag near the line of scrimmage. Generally indicates a hold. Wait and see on the call here. Another couple of Campbellsville players slow to get up on the play. Foul called on Duke Holland. Back up right tackle, getting some time here early on in this Drive. Can Darius Major hobble off the field there? Maybe just a cramp. Hopefully nothing more there. The last thing Campbellsville needs is any more injuries. What has been really an injury plague season thus far for Campbellsville is they're about to fall to one and three on the year with Cumberlands and Lindsey Wilson the next two weeks. Dampier gets the play in from the sideline. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go here at Toyota Stadium. See, maybe Dampier looks away at Noah Kramer one time just to get him a ball. Lumpkin goes out in motion, and before the play is up, a flag is in. We may have a delay of game here. And so back-to-back -back penalties here for Georgetown. Not what you want here late in the game. It's now seven penalties against Georgetown for 54 yards. Campbellsville's also been penalized seven times for 70. Georgetown gets Bethel next week. Bethel in action a little bit later tonight. They are hosting Cumberland's before they come to Toyota Stadium next week. Bethel 2-0 on the season. They've had blowout wins over Thomas Moore and these Campbellsville Tigers. Both games scoring at least 39 points. Delayed draw to Lumpkin, and nice tackle by Andrew Bennett as Lumpkin crossed the 40-yard line and got out to the 43, so just a gain of a couple on the play to make it third down and 15 as we approach two minutes remaining here at... Toyota Stadium. Lumpkin now 40 yards on five carries. Of course, the big one, his first one, a 28-yard run, the longest run of the season for Georgetown 
by 15 yards. Third and 15, Lumpkin in the pistol, now shifts right of Dampier as we have 150 to go. Dampier. Take a shot down the right sideline, and that is pulled down out there by Will Thomas, but again, cannot bring the ball down in bounds as that was well defended out wide on the play by Christopher Williams, the freshman. I think we have an issue with the play clock right now, so the officials telling the press box, turn, turn the play clock off. We'll keep the time on the field. So Georgetown will punt the ball away. Third punt of the day coming for Webb Bates, averaging 39 on his first two tries. Bates gets this one away. Good kick, and Odin will back up to his 16-yard line. Trying to stretch out wide, not going to work. He'll get across the 20 to about the 22-yard line, and that's where Campbellsville takes over with one minute and 37 seconds remaining in this one. Georgetown approaching 400 yards offense in the ball game. Tigers currently sitting at 391. Campbellsville total just 219. Meglis back in. Campbellsville just trying to get something on the scoreboard here before the game's over, and Georgetown is going to try not to allow that as Taylor Hutt was met in the backfield by Jonathan Bothan. Not much doing there. I think Hutt may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. 120 to go. And Campbellsville looking to just play this one out. With some late substitutions all over the place for Georgetown Tigers. All out of sorts on the play as the day Jones Wilson lined up on the wrong side of the field and had to hustle back to the far side, and his man wound up catching the pass. Patrick Odin, that is. And Jones Wilson able to force him out of bounds, but the last thing you want to do late in a game like this, don't get lined up in the wrong place. Under a minute to go, it resulted in a first down for Campbellsville, their 14th first down of the day. And now Hutt going to take it. Got some space up the middle. And Taylor Hutt down the left sideline into Georgetown territory. Brought down at the 40-yard line of Georgetown. The longest run of the day there for Campbellsville. It's a 27-yard run for Hutt. It finally gets Campbellsville out of negative rushing yardage. And... Campbellsville with 30 seconds to play. Trying to see if they can get it in the end zone one more time. They need 40 more yards. They're going to keep it on the ground, though, with Hutt. He'll fall forward to the 39-yard line as he is met there by Tim Anderson. 20 seconds remaining. Not, not, not sure if Campbellsville will run another play. In fact, they won't. Coach Thomas of Campbellsville walking onto the field, and that is going to do it. So Georgetown uses its defense here in the second half and pitches a shutout here in the second half. And the Tigers go to 3-1 and one on the season by beating Campbellsville by a score of 27-6. Campbellsville falls to 1-3 and three on the year. Georgetown has now won five in a row in the series and nine out of 11. And Campbellsville's record here in Georgetown now drops to 2-14 and 14 all time. Georgetown gets Bethel next week in a high-powered Wildcats offense. That should be a fun one next week here at Toyota Stadium and here on stretch. Campbellsville, meanwhile, they're going to go home for the next couple of games starting next Friday when they host Cumberlands in a nightcap out at Campbellsville University. Once again, we do want to send our best along to Campbellsville quarterback Chase Elmore, hopefully a quick and speedy recovery and he can get back to action for a Campbellsville team. They could certainly use him going forward. A promising career for him. Hopefully he can get back to 100% health here soon. Georgetown in the win column one more time as they knock off Campbellsville by a final score of 27 
That's going to wrap up our coverage here tonight at Toyota Stadium. John, as always, check GeorgetownCollegeAthletics.com for the upcoming schedule. Let me see what's coming up here for Georgetown the next month or so. Next week will be senior day here at Toyota Stadium in the final home game of this season when the Wildcats of Bethel come to town before Georgetown hits the road the, the first two Fridays of April. As again, stay tuned to GeorgetownCollegeAthletics.com and all the Georgetown College social media outlets for any updates and schedule changes as they come about over the next few weeks. For our entire Tiger Sports Network crew, I'm Jason Griefer. Thank you so much for joining us. Georgetown defense rules the day. Georgetown beats Campbellsville 27-6. You've been watching Tigers football live on Stretch. <laughs>